Hey you guys, welcome to my form change breakdown collection. These are all of the videos that I did for the Kingdom Hearts 3 form changes. I figured now was a great time to put these all together for the third anniversary of Kingdom Hearts 3. And my channel has grown a lot since these videos first came out. Um, so a lot of new people might not have even seen these. If you are new here, hi, I'm Byroxis. I make a ton of uh, breakdowns of similar nature. I love looking at animations and games and, and kind of shedding a light on that. I also love streaming, so you'll find some stream highlights on this channel as well. Uh, and some memes. I do make memes sometimes that are objectively the best memes you'll ever find. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. Most of this is chronological with a few exceptions, but if you want a full look at what is in this video, check the description for the timestamps. It was honestly really cool to look back and uh, just see how much my video quality and audio quality has changed. Putting these videos together uh, the first time was just a blast. I remember spending so much time each week making these videos. So grab some popcorn and uh, enjoy. Hey you guys, today I wanted to break down the forms associated with the Keyblade form changes. Forms are triggered when you activate a form change. You can't choose which form you go into when you trigger this since the form is tied to the Keyblade and form change. For example, with double air guns and magic launcher, Sora will always go into element form when they are activated. You can't just decide that you want to use blitz form with double air guns. The transformation just automatically changes Sora into element form. Each form has specific abilities and a playstyle associated with each one. The forms I'm going to be talking about today include Guardian Form, Strike Form, Element Form, and Blitz Form. I've already done breakdowns for Second Form, Rage Form, and Ultimate Form, so I won't be talking about those in this video. Let's start with Guardian Form. Guardian Form is associated with three Keyblades, Hero's Origin, Honey Spout, and Classic Tone. This form changes Sora's clothes to a goldish yellow color. A diamond pattern can be seen on his pants as well as his jacket, and different shades of yellow are seen on his jacket and gloves. Toy form changes Sora's clothes to a golden yellow color. The checkered pattern on his pants also changes to a gold color. Monster form has the same jacket as base form, but his fur changes yellow and the stripes on his face, arms, and legs change to a pinkish color. Pirate form changes his bandana yellow as well as his cufflinks and his undershirt. His coat has the diamond pattern on the underside of it, and his hat sports three diamonds on it as well. Let's talk about the abilities associated with Guardian Form. Aerial Recovery is the first ability, and this lets Sora recover in the air after taking damage. Barrier is an ability that makes Sora's guard block any attack from any direction instead of just in front of himself. The next ability, Counter Blast, changes Sora's reprisal. This sends surrounding foes flying backwards. High jump is self-explanatory, Sora can jump higher the longer you hold the jump button. Combo Master allows Sora to continue his combo even if his attack misses an enemy. Second Chance lets you retain at least 1 HP if you take an attack while at 2 HP or higher, while a stand combo lets you retain at least 1 HP if you are stuck in a combo while at 2 HP or higher. Hidden Potential increases your strength and magic when you are up against a powerful enemy. What I think this means is that if you are at a certain level below the enemies you are fighting, you'll get a boost to both your strength and magic. The last ability associated with Guardian Form is the Defender ability, which has the ability to increase Sora's defense by 2 when his HP is at 25% or below. Guardian Form is a defensive form, as can be seen by Counter Shield's unique counter ability, as well as the Barrier and Counter Blast abilities. Abilities such as Defender, Second Chance, and Withstand Combo also show that this form is for defense and for staying alive. An interesting thing I noticed with this form is that every Keyblade associated with it is received either from worlds that have played a big part in Sora's growth, or from people that are close to him. There are also places or people that have been with Sora in each numbered title. Hero's Origin is the Keyblade received from Olympus, Hercules is seen in Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, and 3, and helps Sora grow stronger. Honey Spout is received from the Winnie the Pooh book. This book is also visited in all three titles and plays a key part in Sora's growth. The last one received is from playing Classic Kingdom, which shows Sora and Mickey teaming up to get through various challenges. Mickey has of course been seen in all three titles. I don't know if this was planned, but it's a cool little correlation I found that all three of the Guardian Form Keyblades come from people that are special to Sora. Let's move on to Element Form. There are only two Keyblades associated with this form, Shooting Star and Ever After. Element Form changes Sora's clothes to a blue color. Stars adorn Sora's pants and jacket in this form as well. Toy Form changes Sora's clothes to a blue color, and the checkered pattern on his pants changes to a blue pattern as well. Monster Form has Sora's fur changing to a blue color, and his stripes change to white. Pirate Form changes his bandana, cufflinks, and undershirt to blue, and stars can be seen on the underside of his coat as well as on the side of his hat. Let's move on to the abilities associated with Element Form. 
The first ability is High Jump, which we've already talked about, but this lets Sora jump higher the longer you hold down the jump button. Double Flight is an ability that gives Sora a second jump if you press the jump button while in midair. Combo Master, as I said before, lets Sora continue his combo even if his attacks miss an enemy. Leaf Bracer allows Sora to finish casting Recovery Magic even if he is getting attacked. Magic Combo Thrift is an ability that reduces the cost of a magic cast by one for each successive magic cast. For example, the base form of Fire costs 10 MP, but if you chain together multiple casts of Fire, it will go from costing 10 MP for the first cast, to 9 MP for the second cast, to 8 MP for the third, and so on. This goes really nicely with the next ability, Magic Galvanizer, which increases the damage the longer your magic combo goes on for. Magic Treasure Magnet also pairs well with the previous two abilities. This ability collects any prizes dropped from enemies no matter how far away they are. MP Haste Together recharges your MP 30% faster than usual when you run out. Hidden Potential is here as well, which we've already talked about. Element Form is obviously a magic form, but I also think it is made to be a ranged form. Most attacks can be used from far away, and with Mirage Staff, the most powerful attack has sword creating multiple mirages and shooting at the enemy. Most of the double air guns and the magic launcher attacks are projectile attacks as well. Also, with all the focus on magic, such as rewarding you for chaining attacks together, makes me certain that this form is all about staying back and attacking from outside the range of enemies. My last piece of evidence is the magic treasure magnet. The description says that if you attack with magic, you will collect the prizes dropped no matter how far away they are. Again, this is rewarding you for staying back and using magic to pick off enemies. Anyways, let's move on to strike form. There are three Keyblades associated with this form. Favorite Deputy, Happy Gear, and Wheel of Fate. Strike form changes swords clothes to a red color. A camo pattern can be seen on his pants and jacket. Also on the back of his hood, a crown as well as fleur de lises can be seen. Toy form changes swords clothes red and his checkered pants show some red in it as well. Monster form changes Sora's fur to an orange's color and his stripes turn a pinkish color. Pirate form changes Sora's bandana and cufflinks to a red color. His undershirt is changed to gray and red. A camo pattern can be seen on the underside of his coat, and three Florida de Lises can be seen on his hat. There are not many abilities associated with Strike Form. There are Combo Master and Hidden Potential, which we have already talked about, and Omega Finale. Omega Finale allows Sora to perform a combo finisher at any point during the combo by pressing the jump button. This is actually the same ability that Sora had while he was in Valor Form in Kingdom Hearts 2. Strike Form seems to be focused on dealing with mobs. Most of the attacks seen from the form changes associated with Strike Form show AoE kinds of attacks and the combo finishers have a wide reach as well. The ability to quickly move to the combo finisher can be used to create a safe area around yourself. So this form definitely seems like it's good for tons of enemies and for keeping the area around yourself safe. Let's move on to our last form, Blitz Form. There are three Keyblades associated with this form. Crystal Snow, Nano Gear, and Grand Chef. Blitz form changes Sora's clothes to a green color. Flames adorn Sora's pants and it seems like a camo pattern covers his jacket. Tori form changes Sora's clothes to a green color and his checkered pattern is completely black instead of the black to gray pattern seen in his base form. Monster form changes Sora's fur to a bright green color and his stripes change to a blue color. Pirate form changes his bandana, cufflinks, and undershirt to a green color. A camo pattern can be seen on the underside of his coat and a flame adorns his hat. Let's look at the abilities associated with Blitz Form. The first ability is Air Slide, which Sora has three of. This lets Sora dash while airborne. And the more you stack, the farther you go. Glide allows Sora to glide around if you hold the jump button while in midair. There are also three Super Slide abilities, which is an ability tied to Flow Motion. This increases the distance you can air dash with Flow Motion. Again, there's three of these, so you can stack them to go farther while dashing in Flow Motion. Combo Master is in this form as well. HP Walker is an ability that lets Sora recover HP as he walks or runs around. MP Walker does the same thing except that his MP is recovered as he walks and runs around. MP Hastera makes Sora's MP recharge 20% faster when it runs out. The last ability associated with Blitz Form is Hidden Potential. Blitz Form seems to be focused on movement. Multiple air slides and full motion dashing abilities maxes out your movement speed and abilities such as HP Walker and MP Walker encourage the player to keep moving. The combo finishers with Blizzard Blades and Nano Arms, which are the only form changes that don't echo previous form changes, are focused on enemies in front of Sora rather than clearing out an area around Sora. So I want to say that this form is probably best for single enemies or bosses. With single enemies, you can move around them a lot and you don't have to worry about dodging multiple enemies. 
So you can focus on one enemy, use quick hard hitting attacks, and also be able to run around them, and get back your HP or MP if you need to. With bosses, there's usually a lot of space to move around in, and again, there's not many enemies, so you don't have to focus on dodging, and can move around and recover HP and MP when you need it. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down the form change second form. This form change has the same name as the form associated with it. We can tell because the name above the command menu changes to second form. If you are using the Keenum key, the second form logo is blue with the Keenum key in the center. The other keyblades that have this form change have a silver minimalistic logo above the command menu. When you use a finisher, both logos will change to a yellow color. This is the first form change received in the game and is activated by having the Keenum key, Starlight, or any of the pre-ordered DLC weapons equipped. Keyblades other than the Keenum key will trigger unique situation commands. These are differentiated by the addition of a letter to the end of the second form situation command. The letter used is the first letter of the Keyblade name. Starlight triggers second form S, Midnight Blue triggers second form M, Phantom Green triggers second form P, and Dawn Till Dusk triggers second form D. The three pre-ordered Keyblades don't seem to have any key differences that set them apart from the regular second form. Second form S though has two unique attacks that differentiate it from the normal second form. These are the shot lock and one of the finishers. I will cover these in a bit. Second form's abilities are high jump, which makes Sora jump higher, combo master, which lets Sora continue attacking even if he doesn't hit an enemy, lucky strike, which increases item drops, master treasure magnet, which pulls in items and prizes regardless of where they're at in the field, MP haste, which recharges MP 10% faster when you run out, and hidden potential, which powers up your strength and magic when battling powerful enemies. Anyways, this form change can be triggered while Sora is in his Kingdom Hearts 2 clothes, as well as his new outfit. Nothing changes while Sora is in his old clothes, but his new clothes change to a variation of his Kingdom Hearts 2 attire when second form is activated. The transformation animation is similar to the dry form animation used in Kingdom Hearts 2. The normal combo attacks are not changed from Sora's base form combos, but his combo finishers are reminiscent of finishers from Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Ground combo finishers are Explosion from Kingdom Hearts 2, Guard Break also from Kingdom Hearts 2, and Ripple Drive from Kingdom Hearts 1. The aerial combo finishers are Hurricane Blast from Kingdom Hearts 1, Aerial Finish from Kingdom Hearts 2, and Magnet Burst, which is also from Kingdom Hearts 2. You can actually cancel out a Magnet Burst with magic. This will still pull enemies in for a second while also letting you get back control of Sora. Speaking of magic, it is not changed while well in this form, and neither is blocking or any movement text such as dodge roll, air dash, or double flight. The max shot lock for the keyblades associated with second form is Ragnarok. This is an ability that has been seen in previous titles. Sora focuses energy in the tip of the Keyblade before unleashing a barrage of light to attack the enemy. The Starlight Keyblade has access to the Union Ragnarok Shotlock, which is similar to Ragnarok except that the color of the projectiles is a different color. This form change has a unique ability associated with it. This is the only form change that has multiple finishers. Every time the situation meter is filled, the finisher changes. The first finisher you start out with is Stun Impact, which is a combo finisher from Kingdom Hearts 1. This finisher has Sora attacking a wide area that stuns enemies within reach while also dealing a little bit of damage. After you fill up the situation meter, the finish command changes to Sonic Blade. This is another finisher that originates from Kingdom Hearts 1. After the initial strike, your attack command changes to Rave. You can rave up to 5 times before the Rave command changes to Blast. Blast is a stronger version of the strike and ends the attack. I want to take a second and talk about something we saw back in the Olympus trailer. In this trailer, we saw Sora use the Rising Spiral attack while in second form. This is actually not usable in the final version of the game. It's kind of weird that they implemented this in earlier builds and then took it out for the final product. Anyways, let's move on to the last finisher, which is Ars Arcanum. This is an ability from Kingdom Hearts 1, but the look of the attack is more similar to the Dream Drop Distance version of the attack. The attack command changes to bash to do successive attacks, and the final attack changes the bash command to finish. With both Sonic Blade and Ars Arcanum, you are able to decide how long the attack will be. If you don't select the follow-up command, you can end the attack. Second Form S, triggered by Starlight, has both Stun Impact and Sonic Blade, but when you trigger the third finish command, instead of Ars Arcanum, you get Ancient Light. This finisher calls down five pillars of light, which condense into five orbs of light. These circle and close in around Sora before a dark orb of energy shoots out from Sora, sucking enemies in as copies of Starlight form inside the bubble and cut through enemies. Someone by the name of Water KH actually pointed out that the pillars of light that Sora calls down are the colors of the different unions that you could choose in the Union Cross mobile game. And that is it for the breakdown. I am going to give my thoughts and opinions on the form change now. 
I really enjoy this one. It was a lot of fun to use and all the throwbacks to previous games were really cool. I thought that the attacks were worked in very well and combat didn't really lose out when trying to implement these old attacks. Some of the attacks seemed a little nerfed like Explosion and Ripple Drive. I really wish they would have kept the range and pushback that Explosion had in Kingdom Hearts 2. I also think they missed out on using Drive Forms in this form change. If Sora could have triggered an attack using Valor Form for the first finisher and build up to a Wisdom Form attack for the second finisher and so on, I think it would have been really cool. Maybe the DLC weapons could have changed the clothing color to a certain form, like Second Form P changing to Valor and Second Form M changing to Wisdom or Second Form D changing to Master Form. These could be like second form S where everything was the same except for the shot lock and the final finisher. Though that might have been hard to implement. Another thing I wish would have happened for this form change was an origin for how we got second form. I was really hoping we were going to get some kind of power from Hercules. Though I guess Hercules did say that we could get our power back if we really wanted to help someone. Which may be how we triggered it when we were trying to help Hercules save the people who were in trouble. Still, I would have liked to see some kind of origin for form changes as a whole, and have it explained a little bit more. The attacks in second form are fast and snappy, and I like it. Anyways, that is hey you guys, I've had a ton of comments on my form change breakdown videos pointing out things I've missed, or asking for me to add something like what I think the strategy would be for each form change. I've been wanting to go back and fill out this series, and I thought this would be the perfect time to do it. The first thing I want to point out is the different forms you take in certain worlds. I never did talk about how Sora's second form variations looked in the different worlds. The toy form changes to a second form variant that looks pretty much what his human form looks like. The monster form shows Sora's fur changing to a yellow color, and the dark rings on his legs change changing to a light gray. His jacket changes to black and blue hues. Sora's pirate form shows his cape, cufflinks, and bandana changed to white, and his undershirt changes from red to black. The symbol on his hat changes from a crown to crossed kingdom keys below a heart. This is pretty similar to the Keyblade aesthetic, which has two kingdom keys on it and has an association with Kingdom Hearts. The keychain of the Keyblade also has a similar design. Like I pointed out in my breakdown, this form change is unique in that it has multiple Keyblades that can trigger this. But it's also one of the only form changes that has three combo finishers. Since the combo changes while airborne, that means there are actually six unique combo finisher attacks. This is good since in the early parts of the game, you only have one combo finisher in base form. Being able to deal extra damage is always nice. Speaking of combo finishers, the finisher lunge and launch is pretty interesting. If you don't move on to the next attack, you can start up an air combo since the end of lunge and launch launches enemies into the air. This is a good way of continuing the combo and dealing more damage. In one part of my breakdown, I said that you could break out of your magnet splash with magic. I was actually using a situation command to do that. Regular magic will not break you out of a combo finisher. One comment I saw a lot on my second form breakdown was that you were able to use Rising Spiral, the combo modifier ability that pulled enemies into the air. I made a point in the video that was a little confusing, I think. What I meant to say is that for some reason, Rising Spiral can't be used in second form, or really any form change. I brought it up in this video because we saw in the orchestra trailer that Sora was using Rising Spiral while in second form. In the finished version of Kingdom Hearts 3, certain abilities were overwritten, like combo modifier abilities. This is what I was trying to get across in my initial video, but I think I was a little confusing. <laughs> The last thing I wanted to talk about is the strategy of second form. The base attacks are actually just the base form's base attacks, but the combo finishers seem to be a mix of single enemy attacks and AoE attacks. You have attacks that are focused on an enemy in front of you, like lunge and launch, or hurricane period, and attacks that are focused on multiple enemies, like your other combo finishers. Whenever I think about this form change, the word balance comes to mind. It's not better against mobs or against single enemies. You have attacks and finishers that are tailored to each, so it can work in almost any situation. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. It's really nice actually to come back to this form change content. I love talking about this. There's really nothing like it in the Kingdom Hearts series, uh, at least to me. There's like drive forms and command styles, but I just feel like form changes are just something completely unique and have just so much detail to them. Hey you guys, with the release of the PC versions of the Kingdom Hearts collection, Kingdom Hearts 3 actually had an exclusive Keyblade tied to it called the Elemental Encoder. This is a black and white variation of King Mickey's Keyblade. This triggers second form E, which is a variation of second form. The command menu shows the same command menu as the Starlight Keyblade, and like the other DLC Keyblades, this is just a reskin of second form. So sadly, there's no extra finishers or anything that changes with it, except that the Keyblade looks really good. <laughs> I love the black and white aesthetic. Uh, it looks really good. But the effects do change, and they did make unique ones for the Keyblade. So when you're switching to the Keyblade, or when it's forming in Sora's hand, there's actually some data cubes that appear around it, which looks awesome. Uh, when you're hitting enemies, there's actually some black and white stars, as what looks to be uh, the fluoride items, actually, with the uh, hit effects. 
apologies if the quality looks bad. Uh, it runs great on PC actually, but uh, my computer's not great, and so recording it while also playing it didn't give me the greatest quality, so apologies for that. I do want to touch on the Keyblade abilities though, so you start out with two. The first one is Lucky Strike, which we already know about. It increases the chance for items to drop from enemies. The second one though is called Magic Roulette, and this is actually a unique ability for this Keyblade. Instead of uh, giving you a specific Zaw command, it actually will give you a random Zaw command when you fill up the situation meter. With the other DLC Keyblades, you would get like Firaza or Thundaza. Uh, with this Keyblade, it'll be a random Zaw command out of all of the available magic. And that is all I have for you guys today. I know this is a super short video, um, but I did want to, you know, this is my thing. I kept me the form changes in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, so it is nice to see even like, what, two, two years later that they're still putting out content uh, and giving us some unique stuff. Hey you guys, if I'm being honest, I never thought I'd be doing another one of these, uh, but today we'll be looking at the Advent Red Keyblade. This is the Keyblade exclusively on the Switch for Kingdom Hearts 3. If you're hoping for a unique form change, you'll probably be disappointed. Like all of the console exclusive Keyblades, Advent Red gives you a second form version using the same naming convention as all the other DLC Keyblades, using the first letter of the Keyblade's name to differentiate it, so second form A. This particular one is a reskin of Mickey's Star Cluster Keyblade, and is a mix of bright reds and blues as a nod to the original Joy-Cons that came with the Switch. I saw someone on Twitter actually who made a great comment of like, why didn't they go with the name Switchblade? Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty sure I saw uh, should be a guy saying that. When enemies are hit, confetti and stars with red and blue outlines appear. Confetti also appears when you summon the Keyblade. The only other thing to note are the abilities, which are two we have seen before. NP Converter makes all the MP orbs that drop, large orbs, and Magic Roulette, which is an ability that'll randomly give you a Zaw command when you build your situation meter, regardless of what level of magic you use. So uh, yeah, that's the console exclusive Keyblade. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I know I haven't really been doing a lot of in-depth analysis content or anything. Um, I'm one too soon. I'm uh, working on a couple videos right now, surprisingly. And sorry, my voice is kind of going out right now, so <laughs> that's why the voice sounds weird. Um, but yeah. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll be back on the content grind soon enough, I swear. This is the Switch exclusive. This is the Switch ex This is the uh, DLC Switch Keyblade. This is the Switch. Hey you guys, today we're gonna to be breaking down the Counter Shield form change. This form change is associated with Guardian form and is activated by having the Hero's Origin Keyblade equipped. The Counter Shield logo above the command menu pulses with blue electricity every couple seconds, and during the finisher, blue electricity surrounds the shield on the logo. Both of these are similar to the blue electricity that surrounds Sora's shield when he has a level 2 counter attack ready. Let's talk about the combat of Counter Shield. This form change does the same combo regardless of if you're on the ground or in the air. These attacks change, of course, depending on enemies around you, but the basic combo starts with Sora doing a quick horizontal strike up before spinning his shield and dashing forward into enemies. Sora then does a strike raid-like attack where he throws his shield forward. This attack can continue for a while, but you can also cut it short by pressing X. The next two attacks in this combo are combo finishers. The first one is a spinning attack with Sora holding his shield out, bashing enemies as he moves forward, and the second combo finisher has Sora shooting out a ring with his shield before summoning orbs that shoot down bolts of lightning. These spin and shoot out in a circle around Sora. Magic is shot out of the shield, but it is the same magic that Sora casts in his base form. The guard mechanic is changed while in the counter shield form change. You can hold square to prolong your guard. Sora can also move around for a short period of time while guarding. If Sora successfully guards against an attack, you will charge the shield. The first charge will give Sora the counter command Wrathful Fist, and gives the shield a golden glow with yellow bolts of electricity shooting out. This counter has a giant fist coming out of the shield, damaging enemies it hits. If you charge a second time before attacking, you will have the Wrathful Flurry command, and the shield will glow blue with blue sparks coming out of the shield. This counter has multiple giant fists flying out of the shield. While charging, the shield actually changes its look, with the lightning bolt becoming more prominent in the transformation the higher the charge. The shot lock for counter shield has Sora calling down a giant ball of energy that he catches on his shield. He spins the ball of energy, scattering out beams of light that damage enemies. The finish command for counter shield has Sora transforming the shield into a chariot and spawning a pegasus. The attack command changes to thunder, which lets Sora call down lightning bolts around him as he rides around damaging enemies he runs into. And that is it for the breakdown. Now I'll give my thoughts and opinions on this form change. I like the idea of this form, but I feel like I was always getting hit out of my combo in this form change, and when I tried to guard, enemies seemed to stop attacking. 
I think this could have been a great form change, and it may be great on higher difficulties if critical does end up being included in this game. I also think magic could have been used in a more defensive manner, like maybe having the magic act like the arrow magic in Kingdom Hearts 1. It could decrease the damage taken and give enemies a status effect with whatever magic was cast, like burn for fire or freeze for blizzard. I think if enemies are more aggressive in this game, the form change would be really good, but with this transformation being so focused on guarding and countering, and the enemies hardly seeming to attack a lot, it was hard for me to enjoy using this one. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. As I stated before, this series looks to fill in the gaps of my original breakdown series, so each episode will be unique as I'll cover things I missed for that particular form change. Today we're going to be talking about Counter Shield. The original breakdown I did, I feel was severely lacking. It was one of my first, I think it was my second one, and I kind of like glazed over a ton of things. Because of that, this video is practically going to be a remake of the original while also adding in stuff I had missed or overlooked. The first thing I want to look at is the transformation. I actually never broke down the transformation into this form change. Sora's Keyblade grows bigger as he brings it to his side. The Keyblade twists and the bolts of lightning on the sides of the Keyblade break off, growing and surrounding the middle of the Keyblade. Lightning arcs between the different pieces as they move to their place. As Sora brings the Keyblade down to his side, we can see that the pieces have condensed down towards the handle. If the camera doesn't go into a cinematic view, we can see the pieces spin as they move towards the handle of the Keyblade. The top part of the handle stays as the bottom part sinks into it. Bolts of lightning appear on either side as light gets sucked into the shield. The clouds on the shield push out to reveal lightning shooting out from the middle. Sora then grabs the shield and the bolts of lightning on the outside disappear as the clouds latch back onto the shield. If you look at the non-cinematic version, it also shows that the bolts do just disappear. At a normal speed, you can barely even see where the bolts are, so it's probably likely they didn't feel the need to animate them going into the shield. Anyways, let's move on to combat. Half of these attacks in the combo actually deal lightning damage. You can tell this because the Sorcerer Nobody takes no damage during some of the attacks since he is immune to all magic attacks. The attacks that deal lightning damage are the Shield Throw, the Dash, as well as the Combo Finisher. The Finisher also deals lightning damage. Let's look at Sora's block wall in this form change. When blocking in the Guardian form abilities let you guard against all attacks around you regardless of where the attack is coming from. It's a little misleading though, since Sora holds the shield up in front of himself instead of creating a barrier. The next thing I wanted to point out is that the shot lock for counter shield actually doesn't deal lightning damage. I assume this giant ball of energy would have an elemental attribute, but it looks like it deals physical damage. The finisher shows Sora flipping backwards as his shield glows with light. He throws the shield downward where it spins before it separates into two wheels. Again, everything kind of just disappears, probably because of the speed in which everything is happening. The wheels separate and start spinning as a chariot spawns in the middle. This chariot has the clouds and lightning seen on the shield. An orb of lightning appears in front of the chariot, which spawns a pegasus. Sora lands and grabs a hold of the reins before the attack starts. The finisher has a mind of its own, or so I thought. It actually targets the enemies around you and moves around the area trying to hit as many enemies as possible. If you're fighting only a single enemy, the chariot will circle that enemy multiple times as you attack. If there are no enemies around you, the finisher will automatically end. The last thing I want to talk about is the strategy for Counter Shield, which obviously focuses on countering enemy attacks. While you can use it against mobs or single enemies, I found this form change to be good for single enemies since most of your attacks are focused in front of Sora, such as some of the attacks in the combo as well as the counter attacks. Even the finisher, which can deal damage all around you and cover a wide area, does better against a single target damage-wise. That's just my opinion though, I know there are some attacks that do cover a wide area, and the finisher can technically cover a wide area, but I feel like it's better for single enemies or targets. What do you guys think though? Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down Rage Form. This form change is not associated with a particular Keyblade, but is rather triggered when Sora is low on health. Rage Form is able to be used as soon as form changes are unlocked, which is also when you unlock second form. The logo above the command menu has dark flames behind a heart symbol and the words Rage Form. This is similar to second form and ultimate form in that it shows the name of the form's name above the command menu. This logo actually changes to a reddish color when using the ability Wrist Charge. The heart is also filled with a light that is similar to the color of Sora's eyes while on this form. This form change has Sora diving into a ball of darkness and emerging as a shadowy version of himself. Flames are the main symbol of this form and can be seen on his pants and coat. Sora's hood has a heart similar to the one in the logo with flames around it. If you use Rage Form while you are in Sora's Kingdom Hearts 2 clothes, he actually has the same symbols he had while in Anti Form. Rage Form recovers all of your health when you trigger it, so it's a nice little safety net for players. 
This does not recover MP though, and your items, links, magic, and shot locks are not usable while in rage form. Let's talk about the combat of rage form. Like other form changes, combos can change depending on the enemies around Sora. The ground and air combos are different, but the combo finishers stay the same regardless of if you are on the ground or in the air. Let's look at the ground combo first. I'm probably going to show this footage at half speed or even slower since Sora moves so quickly during these combo animations. The first attack has Sora twisting in the air as he swings his keyboard down. During the end of the swing, Sora uses his other hand to scratch the enemy with a rising slash that turns into a flipping slash at the end. This can also be triggered in the air actually. The second attack has Sora flipping upside down before he swings his keyblade over his head, spinning forward while slashing with his keyblade. I thought this was a scratching attack at first, but you can actually differentiate between which attack is a scratch or keyblade attack by looking at the line of darkness generated. If it is from the keyblade, it will be one line, but if it is a scratch, it will be multiple thin lines. Anyways, let's move on to the combo finishers. The first combo finisher has Sora thrusting his keyblade down and spinning around it, kicking out at enemies. The second combo finisher has Sora teleporting and then reappearing as he quickly slashes around himself five times. The third combo finisher is insane, with Sora slashing and scratching in multiple directions as he twists and turns in the air. Sora slashes upwards at the end before flipping backwards and generating a ball of darkness that has an AoE type of effect, hitting enemies near Sora. The last two combo finishers are insanely fast and it is crazy how many flips, scratches, and attacks Sora does during them. Anyways, let's move on to the air combo. The air combo is really interesting. I never noticed this, but during the first attack, Sora throws his keyblade up in the air before catching it and holding it backwards similar to Ventus's wielding style. Sora scratches horizontally and then follows with a horizontal slash with his keyblade. This happens again with another horizontal scratch and slash, but his horizontal keyblade slash continues as Sora spins twice in the air, slashing at enemies around him. At the end of the attack, you can see Sora letting go of the keyblade and changing back to his normal wielding style. The second attack is the same as the spinning attack during the ground combo, except that Sora scratches at enemies with his other hand during the combo in the air. The next three attacks are the same combo finishers as the ground combo. While in rage form, Sora can teleport to enemies within range. This is probably the same ability that ultimate form has. Blocking while in rage form has Sora creating a ball of darkness around himself that blocks attacks from any direction. You can see a red type of fluid appearing that follows Sora's slashing hand when he generates the barrier. If you successfully block an attack, Rage Form has a special reprisal. The counter shows Sora moving away from the attack and disappearing. He then reappears, twisting upwards before he launches his Keyblade towards enemies in a Strike Raid-esque attack. I also love how Sora just slowly twists in the air during this attack. Other things that have changed while in Rage Form are the dashing mechanic, which has Sora teleporting, the double flight animation, which has Sora curling into a ball and spinning twice while jumping, and the running animation, which is actually a little similar to the Kingdom Hearts 2 running animation, as both have Sora raising an arm behind him as he runs. On another note, while running, Sora's footsteps leave behind footprints that look like the same red fluid we see when Sora is generating his barrier. The idle animation for Rage Form also seems to be a nod towards Anti-Form, as during both, Sora looks to the right and then the left before jumping. Now let's talk about the finisher for Rage Form. I may be making a stretch, but this finisher makes me think of the original Trinity Limit. Both have Sora pushing the Keyblade into the ground and spinning on it as you summon an AoE type of attack. With Trinity Limit, you summon pillars of light around you and a ball of light in the middle with a magic circle forming on the ground. With the Rage Form finisher, you summon balls of darkness that shoot out dark energy around you as darkness pools on the ground. Like I said before, this could definitely be a stretch, but I thought I would mention it. The final thing I want to talk about is the special ability associated with Rage Form, Wrist Charge. This ability fills up part of your form gauge while sacrificing 50% of your HP. You can wrist charge up to 3 times and you can keep track of how many times you have charged by the number of crystals floating around Sora. The first attack of the ground combo as well as the last combo finisher change after every charge. The first attack spawns a pillar of darkness for every charge you've done. So the first wrist charge will spawn one pillar, the second wrist charge will spawn two pillars, and the third wrist charge will spawn three pillars. The combo finisher with the first wrist charge spawns a small ball of darkness with tentacles coming out of it. The second charge has a bigger ball of darkness as well as having more tentacles. The third wrist charge spawns an even bigger ball of darkness with more tentacles coming out of it. I have heard people saying that wrist charge increases damage dealt and taken the higher up you wrist charge, but I do not believe this is the case. I think the only damage that changes are the attack that spawns pillars of darkness and the last combo finisher. If you have proof otherwise, please let me know by linking me footage down below or on Discord or Twitter. And I believe that is it for my breakdown of Rage Form. 
Now I want to talk about some theories and opinions I have. I've seen a couple people talking about this form and saying it's just like Antiform. I don't believe that is the case though. Antiform was a punishment and showed Thor being taken over by darkness because of his lust for power. Rageform though is Thor channeling the darkness to save himself. He uses darkness as his last resort to stay alive. I think Thor still having the Keyblade shows that he is not being consumed by the darkness, but rather channeling it and using its power. In Kingdom Hearts 2, Thor learns that darkness is not evil in and of itself, but rather what hides inside the darkness is what is evil. One more thing I want to talk about is a theory concerning Wrist Charge. Many people have probably put together that the three crystals that appear are most likely symbolic of Ventus, Roxas, and Xion. To further prove this point, we see at the end of the game, when the Grim Reaper Heartless is taking the hearts of Sora's friends, that the hearts look like crystals. Both the Wrist Charge crystals and the hearts even have similar sparkle effects. In Kingdom Hearts 3, we learn that the power of darkness can come from being alone. All three of the people inside Sora have experienced being alone. They have lost their bodies and their friends. Roxas felt alone and even says in Kingdom Hearts 2 that no one would miss him if he were gone. Ventus has been alone and asleep for the past 10 years and Xion has been forgotten by practically everyone. Maybe Risk Charge is Sora channeling their pain of feeling alone and using it to power up the darkness inside of him. What do you guys think? I think that is all I have for you guys today. I really enjoy this form a lot and it is probably one of my favorites. My only gripes are that you can't use magic, shot locks, or items in this form. I would have loved to see some dark based magic or a cool shot lock for this form. Hey you guys, today's Breakdown Plus will be going back to Rage Form. There's a lot of hidden mechanics with this form that was revealed in the Ultimania, such as how triggering it worked and the damage buffing that happens when using Wrist Charge. I'll cover all of the information there first and then add anything else that was overlooked in the original Breakdown. The Ultimania neatly lays out the conditions to go into Rage Form. First of all, your HP must be below 25%, which is when the warning sound will go off and your HP bar will blink. If you have a status effect like being burned, frozen, or stunned, you will not be able to trigger Rage Form. Also, if you are in a link or using attraction flow when your health falls below 25%, Rage Form will not appear. Another thing I didn't know is that if you have already used Rage Form twice in the same battle, you will not be able to trigger it. If you fall back into the 25% range before a minute and a half has passed, Rage Form will also not appear. Lastly, during the Xehanort boss fight, you will not be able to trigger Rage Form except when you are forced into it in the last sequence. The actual chances for triggering Rage Form is initially 10% when at critical health. This will increase by 5% for every 5% of health you are down. So when you have 25% of your health left, you'll have 10%. When you have 20% of your health left, you will have 15% chance. At 15% HP left, you will have a 20% chance of triggering it. At 10%, you will have a 25%. And at 5%, you will have a 30% chance. The chances to trigger Rage Form a second time in the same battle drop to a third of the original percentage, so even at 5% health, you only have a 10% chance of triggering it. Okay, that's enough percentages for me. Let's move on. Every time you Wrist Charge, you will increase the time in Rage Form by 3 seconds. The last bit of information from the Ultimania is about the attack stat. Every time you Wrist Charge, you will increase your attack by 5. So, by the time you reach the third Wrist Charge, you are adding plus 15 to your Strength stat, which seems like a lot. I wonder if it means that you'll gain plus 5 to your Strength stat overall, or if you actually are adding plus 5 to your Strength stat every time you Wrist Charge. Anyways, that is all the information from the Ultimania. Now let me fill in the gaps from my previous breakdown. The first thing I want to point out is the logo. For some reason when you use the wrist charge or finish command, the logo reverts to the original blue color but then transitions to red. I'm assuming this is left over from the first time you use wrist charge, since when you first go into wrist charge your logo is blue and then it changes to red the first time you wrist charge and so on. Speaking of wrist charge, I don't think I mentioned it but you can stun enemies around you with it. This lets you stop an enemy close to you from attacking as well as lets you restart your combo. Another thing about wrist charging is that every time you use it, you will hear the same sound as a heart that leaves the body. Listen to the sound during wrist charge and then listen to these other scenes where a heart leaves the body. My name. Super Slash, one of my mods, actually keyed me into this. This gives more evidence to the fact that Sora is harnessing the hearts inside of him. I'm not sure if they are connected, but Namine talks about these hurt memories inside of Sora during Recoded, and shows an orb of light that looks incredibly similar to the orb that Sora produces while he is wrist charging. The power of darkness stems from being alone, so what if Sora is channeling that pain of loneliness? These hearts all return by the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, so maybe this is why you can't wrist charge during the end sequence when Sora is drained of all his light. It's probably not true though, since you can wrist charge before this section, during 
the 13 vessel fight and during the Keyblade graveyard fights. The three hearts have already returned by this point and you can still use a wrist charge, so it's probably a coincidence. During this final fight where Xehanort forces you into rage form, if you are in another form, like strike form or ultimate form, you'll stay in it while you are changing into rage form. I thought this was pretty cool even if it is a bug or unintended occurrence. Also I never did break down the return to the light command associated with rage form. This command shows Sora flipping backwards twice before dashing forward. Sora dashes through Xehanort leaving behind a red streak with each thrust. At the end Sora dashes upwards before sending out streams of darkness in front of Kingdom Hearts. Tentacles push out from Sora's body before he flips and dives straight down at Xehanort. Sora hits the pedestal causing a giant explosion. This is extremely reminiscent to Riku's Dark Aura attack. Sora also has an attack similar to Ansem's. Both create an orb of darkness that has tentacles shooting out of it. The last similarity is a similarity between Sora and the Dark Sides. During 0.2 we saw the Dark Sides using a kind of spiky orb of darkness. This is also seen during Sora's finishing move. One other point I want to make is pretty well known, but I didn't mention it in my previous breakdown. If you use another situation command while in rage form, you will automatically revert to your base form. The last thing I'll add is two comments from my original video. Didvax noted that both anti and rage form do not cast a shadow. Aotimi pointed out that the first attack of the air combo looks incredibly similar to one of Ven's attacks. Actually, I have one more point to make about the strategy for Rage Form. Personally, I feel like this is made for boss battles. During mob fights, I feel like I was always getting hit on my combos, and with the wrist charge mechanic taking all of your health away, I was always dying with mobs. If you can react quickly enough though, your guard and dodge will help you deal with mobs, so I guess this form change is good against everything. Human Herb bosses were especially good with this form since the combo actually hits them up into the air and then slams them back down during it. The best strategy is to wrist charge while your party members have healing items or MP to heal you. They will usually heal you back to full health, so you have the damage bonuses without the critical health. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down both the double arrow guns and magic launcher form changes. These form changes are associated with element form and are triggered by using the shooting star keyblade. I'll be breaking down double arrow guns first. The transformation into double arrow guns is kind of crazy. The star on the hilt and the star on the end of the keyblade both grow bigger before Sora thrusts the keyblade forward making the star on the end shoot out stretching the keyblade before coming back towards Sora. Then it seems like the star breaks and becomes these whip things that come back and form the sides of the guns. You may also notice that the guns are not identical. We see the star that was on the hilt of shooting star on the gun in Sora's right hand but this is not seen on the gun in Sora's left hand. It's cool how you can pick out the different parts of the Keyblade in this form change. The right hand, like I said before, is from the star and this part right here. The front part of the gun is this part here on the Keyblade. The left hand seems to be the bottom part of the hilt, which includes the handle of the Keyblade and these points on the bottom, which is this part here on the gun. I love how detailed this form change is, and I enjoyed figuring out the different parts of the Keyblade making up the guns. Something interesting about the double air gun's form change is that during the transformation, Sora dashes forward. When Sora pushes his keyblade forward, he's actually charging forward as well. Also near the end of the transformation, Sora flips the guns. The logo above the command menu shows the name of the form change and has stars on both sides of the name. The star on the end of the keyblade looks like the star in the logo. Stars will fly up from the bottom and line up with the stars in the sides of the name. One of the stars is an outline of a star, and the other star looks like the star on the end of the Keyblade. Also, occasionally there will be shooting stars that show up above the logo. Let's move on to the combat of shooting star. Like other form changes, combos change depending on the enemies around Sora. Also, there is no difference between the air and ground combo with this form change. The first attack has Sora swiping horizontally with each gun, shooting out three arrows per gun. At the end of each swipe, there is a light effect that comes from the gun. The next attack has Sora crossing his arms as he shoots out 4 arrows per gun. Again, at the end of the attack, a light effect can be seen coming from each gun. Sora then spins around shooting out 7 arrows per gun. This attack will actually trigger first in the combo if you are surrounded by enemies. The combo finisher has Sora transforming the guns. The handguards spread out as the front of the guns grow larger with a thin blue line of light forming around the barrels which then condense into balls of energy. The outside of the barrels spin as the energy is shot out creating 8 arrows per gun. This combo finisher does not have a cinematic scene during the attack that is seen in other form changes. Even the magic launcher has a slight zoom in during the combo finisher on a close enemy, so it's strange that this form change has no kind of cinematic camera. There is one other attack that can trigger during a combo, which is when you are above an enemy. This is similar to the double air gun's shot lock and has Sora spinning as he shoots downwards. 
He shoots six arrows out, but the guns flash a lot more times. I've counted five flashes per gun, which should mean that ten arrows were shot out. Maybe the animation is just a little glitched, or the flashes of light might mean something else. Also, you probably noticed, but there are two different types of arrows that Sora can shoot out from his guns. One is the arrows shot out during the combo. These are white arrows that have white dust as well as blue and purple sparkles following them. The combo finisher has yellow arrows with bluish and whitish lines falling behind. These look similar to the lines that form around the guns at the start of the combo finisher as well as the shot lock. Both arrows also have a heart pattern on the ends of the arrows. Moving on, Sora's dodge changes with this form change. If you dodge or try to block, Sora will dash in the direction you are moving if you are dodging, or will dash backwards if you try to block while shooting two arrows from each gun. Let's look at the magic for double arrow guns. The way magic works in this form change is that each level of magic shoots out more magic. The base magic shoots out one cast per gun, the second tier of magic shoots out two casts per gun, the third tier shoots out three casts per gun, and the fourth tier, Grand Magic, shoots out four casts per gun. There is also a shot lock associated with this form change, which does not usually happen for the first level form change if there is a second level above it. This is because the max shot lock changes depending on how many enemies you are locked onto. If you are locked onto only one or two enemies, it will trigger the double air guns transformation. Sora jumps up above the enemy and starts spinning and shooting down arrows. Blue lines also circle around Sora as he descends. This shot lock looks extremely similar to the attack you do if you are above an enemy during a combo. A unique mechanic with double air guns is something called auto shot. This has Sora transforming his guns into what they look like with the combo finisher. Tons of arrows are shot out from the tips of the spinning guns. You also get a unique reticle to aim with. The last thing I want to talk about with double air guns is the idle animation for it. This one is pretty simple with Sora holding the guns and looking around before slightly lifting the guns and then letting them disappear. Now let's talk about the magic launcher form change. During this transformation, a ring of light forms around Sora and the sides of the guns dismantle and form two more rings around Sora. Both guns grow larger and Sora fuses both guns together as the rings of light condense around the launcher. Again, pieces of the Keyblade can be seen pretty well in this transformation. The blade of the Keyblade makes up the four outside prongs of the launcher. The middle of the launcher is the handle of the Keyblade. The two rings on the outside are the star and circle at the tip of the Keyblade, and the star and this piece are seen in the hilt of the Keyblade. The feathers on the end are probably this part on the bottom of the Keyblade. The launcher also has a heart symbol visible if you look at it from the side. The logo above the command menu shows the words Magic Launcher with a star in between the words and stars on the sides of the words, similar to the Double Air Guns logo. There are also wings that look similar to the wing on the launcher. This logo actually shows the finisher for this form change. The wings can be seen during the finisher and the star in the middle is actually the circle on the launcher. The circle even glows a little bit during the finisher. Anyways, let's talk about the combat for Magic Launcher. This form change has the same combo regardless of if you are on the ground or in the air, but it is unique in that your combos change depending on how close you are to enemies. If you are close to enemies, Sora will start the combo with an upwards diagonal slash, followed by a horizontal slash, before ending the combo with a kind of sliding upper attack which hits the enemy up into the air. Sora then charges the launcher and unleashes a powerful blast. The blast consists of a blue ball of light charging at the tip as the two rings move up the launcher and the four long pieces of the launcher open up. After the blast, the launcher returns to normal. If you are not close to the enemy, Sora will shoot at the enemies with white orbs. When they hit, they have an AoE type of effect. This happens twice and then Sora will shoot a bigger orb that has a bigger area of effect. This bigger orb also has a couple stars on it. During this combo, star effects and blue sparkles are seen when Sora shoots the orbs out and also as particle effects when the orb explodes. Magic while in this form change is changed to orbs that explode with an AoE type of effect of the magic cast. This is similar to the combo attack when you are far away from enemies and it actually is the same animation as the combo. The size of the orb and the area of effect change depending on the tier of magic cast. So Fyraga will shoot a bigger orb and have a bigger area of effect than a simple fire or Fyra. The max shot lock with Magic Launcher shows the launcher glowing like it is casting magic, and then Sora shoots off a torpedo with a propeller. The propellers look similar to this piece on the launcher. This flies forward before exploding with blue sparkles as a ton of smaller torpedoes with stars on them go after enemies. The E3 2015 trailer showed off an early form of this shot lock, and I kinda like that one better. 
It looks like this would fit with the form change better than this torpedo thing we ended up with. I may be missing something though that connects the torpedo with the magic launcher. Let me know your thoughts down below on why they chose this as the shot lock for magic launcher. Auto shot is also usable while in magic launcher and has sword charging up the launcher and shooting either a white orb with a couple stars on it, similar to the one you shoot at during the combo finisher, or a blue orb with lots of stars on it. We can see the launcher charging during this auto shot mechanic, and if you shoot early, it will only shoot out the white orb with an area of effect similar to the combo finisher. I believe this is actually the same attack as the combo finisher since the same orb is shot out. Also the same particle effects are seen when shooting both orbs out. If you hold down the auto shot button though, the launcher will show white particles charging around the tip of the launcher, and Sora will shoot at an orb that has a huge area of effect. This attack has three sections, a pink core, a green one in the middle, and a blue one on the outside. The idle animation has Sora pretending to aim at an enemy. I love this animation because I feel like this is totally something I would do if I was able to hold this launcher. <laughs> now let's talk about the finisher for the magic launcher. Energy starts to spin around the outer ring on the launcher and arcs to the inner ring. Sora then shoots out both of the rings towards enemies which explodes with a mega flare like attack. It also looks like the spear inside the launcher is shot out with the rings. Here we can see what looks to be shooting stars that come out of the explosion. When Sora shoots out the rings, we can see that the wing on the edge of the launcher turns into two giant wings. We can actually see them moving if the camera doesn't go into the cinematic mode it usually does during the finisher. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys. Hey you guys, today's Breakdown Plus will be going back to the shooting star form changes, double air guns, and magic launcher. There's honestly not too much to fill in the gaps here with this breakdown. This is probably one of my most detailed breakdowns ever, but I did miss one or two things. The first thing I missed that I actually pointed out in one of my pre-release breakdowns is that when using the magic launcher auto shot mechanic, if you charge up a shot, the orb shot out looks extremely similar to the magic boost item from Kingdom Hearts 2. I also never actually pointed out the dashing and guard in magic launcher. A dash on the ground replaces the dodge roll, and there is no guard for this form change. You will simply dash backwards out of the way. With this being a magic form, I wondered if some of the attacks would be based on some kind of magic. But it seems like all the attacks are physical based, since I never saw anything not damage the sorcerer. And that's literally the only things I could see that I missed. But I also didn't talk about my thoughts and opinions on these form changes, or the strategy. Double air guns is probably one of my favorite form changes. The ability to attack multiple enemies at once is so nice, and also being able to keep moving around during attacks without moving closer to the enemy is great. Magic combo thrift and magic galvanizer abilities also makes magic insanely OP. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is building the situation command for magic launcher while in double air guns. Usually I'm not locked on so my errors are going everywhere and only connecting half the time. So I'm always just missing the magic launcher command. To get around this, if I want to go into magic launcher, I'll just use the auto shot mechanic which does a good job of building up your situation meter. The magic launcher combo is also one of my favorites. Not just because the close up combo does massive damage, but also because of the close range and long range combat mechanic that was shown off in this form change. It was so cool to see your combat change depending on the distance you were away from the enemy. The strategy for double air guns is definitely long range. The magic abilities I talked about before and the long range attacks you have reward you for staying back and picking off enemies. Also I think that double air guns is probably best for mobs since you can target multiple enemies at the same time. The magic launcher form change is versatile in both long and short range combat. I feel though that it is better for single enemies since most of the attacks are focused in front of you. The auto shot and finisher though do have quite a bit of reach so I would use those for crowd control. Anyways that is all I have for you guys today. I know this one was a little on the shorter side but I hope you still enjoyed it. Hey you guys, today we are going to be breaking down both the Hyper Hammer and Drill Punch form changes. These form changes are associated with Strike Form and are triggered by using the favorite Deputy Keyblade. Are we breaking down Hyper Hammer first? The Hyper Hammer transformation starts with Sora whipping the Keyblade around his head. You can actually see the cactus move around during this. The Keyblade shines brightly then Sora whips the Keyblade around again. This part right here, which is the Space Ranger emblem from Toy Story, spins and grows larger. The cactus grows smaller as a rocket appears from a beam of light. At first I thought the rocket came from the star that was connected to the cactus, but here we can see that both stars are visible at the same time. The rocket spins around Sora twice before it comes back to the Keyblade. When the rocket moves in front of the camera, you can actually see it reflecting back whatever is in front of it. I thought this was a really nice touch. Also the wings on the rocket here have a similar design to Buzz Lightyear's wings. When the rocket comes close to the Keyblade, the cactus shoots up and catches it as the handle of the Keyblade stretches down into a pole. We know this because the handle of the Keyblade has the same look as the pole of the hammer. When the rocket connects to the cactus, the share of stars on the sides of the rocket spin. The rocket and cactus get smaller at the end of the transformation. 
we see on the bottom of the pole a purple pointed part, which I believe is this part here of the Keyblade. During the transformation, enemies around Sora will be pulled up into the air and will be hit by the rocket. The logo shows the words Hyper Hammer and has the Share Star as well as the Space Ranger emblem on it. The hammer on the logo will occasionally swing down, causing the words and star to bounce upwards. The star spins during the bounce, and a white glimmer shines across the letters. The ground combo for a Hyper Hammer starts with Sora slamming the hammer down on the ground in front of him, cracking it. This creates a small shockwave as well. So it uses the rocket to boost his hammer towards the ground, making it hit harder. The second attack has Sora spinning around with his hammer outstretched, hitting enemies in range. Again, Sora uses the rocket to boost himself, spinning Sora around faster. Actually, every attack is boosted, so I won't point it out for the rest of them. This spinning attack also triggers when there are multiple enemies around Sora. The next attack has Sora smashing the hammer in front of him and behind himself. These generate small cracks and shockwaves. Sora then slides forward, dragging the hammer against the ground and swinging upwards. This attack also triggers if an enemy is far away from Sora. If an enemy is above Sora, he will use this same attack to slide up to the enemy. For the combo finisher, Sora makes the hammer grow bigger before slamming it down on the ground. This creates giant cracks in the ground. These cracks can actually hit enemies into the air. The air combo is practically the same as the ground combo, except that instead of slamming the hammer against the ground, Sora spins in the air with the hammer. Because it is so similar, I don't really feel the need to break it down. The combo finisher has Sora making the hammer bigger and swinging it downwards just like the ground combo. If you are above the enemy, Sora will do a ground pound attack similar to the first hit of the combo. This one though has Sora doing a quick flip as he smashes his hammer downwards. There is a huge shockwave as well as cracks that form on the ground. This is the same attack as the flow motion attack you can do in Hyper Hammer. Instead of the normal ground pound with flow motion, Sora will slam down with a hammer. Magic while in this form change is changed to an AoE style of magic. The higher the tier of magic, the bigger the AoE magic will be. Fire pushes out a shockwave of fire around Sora, and a number of fireballs will circle around Sora depending on the tier cast. The first tier will have two fireballs circle around Sora. The second tier will have four, the third will have six, and the fourth tier, Firaza, will have eight. Fire rod casts and above will burn the ground, but the normal fire will leave the floor unaffected. Also, energy arcs up from the ground during the Firaza cast. Water magic starts with the first tier spawning two streams of water around Sora. Every cast of magic makes water ripple out over the ground. The second tier has Sora making a dome of water that pushes outwards. There are still two streams of water though during this cast, like the first tier. The third tier has Sora generating a bigger dome of water and spawning four streams of water around himself. The fourth tier has Sora creating a whirlpool around himself as four streams of water circle around him. Blizzard starts with Sora creating a barrier of ice around himself as two casts of ice circle around him. Ice also coats the ground during this attack. The second and third tiers of this attack are pretty much the same except that the higher the cast of Blizzard, the larger the barrier of ice is, the larger the casts of Blizzard are, and the larger the reach of ice coating the ground has. The grand magic of Blizzard is pretty much the same, with everything being bigger and having a larger reach, but six casts of Blizzard circle around Sora instead of two. The first tier of Thunder has Sora creating a spark that circles around him, as well as a ball of energy that spawns at the center of his body and shoots out lightning. There's also a golden ring that spawns on the floor beneath Sora. The spark and golden circle will have a larger area of effect the higher the tier cast. During the second tier, a dark orb surrounds Sora and shoots out bolts of energy. On the third tier, you will spawn the dark orb which you can see here, but energy also arcs down from above Sora. Lightning covers the ground during this cast as well. The grand magic for Thunder is insane. Sora calls down lightning that circles around him as a ring closes in around Sora. When the ring reaches Sora, a giant beam of lightning comes down and lightning spreads out across the floor as pieces of the ground fly up. Arrow is pretty simple. Arrow surrounds Sora as two condensed casts of air circle him. The second tier increases the range of the air and adds two more casts that circle around Sora. Small pieces of rocks are pulled up into the air for the second tier upwards. The third tier again increases the range and adds two more casts to circle Sora. The fourth tier creates a whirlwind around Sora as multiple casts of arrow fly around him. Let's look at the blocking and movement tech associated with Hyper Hammer. Blocking has Sora holding the hammer in front of himself with both hands on the pole. This blocking animation looks extremely similar to Sora's blocking animation in Dream Drop Distance. Sora's dodge roll is changed to a dash while on the ground, but his air dodge does not seem to be affected. The double flight animation seems slightly changed with Sora holding his hammer behind him looking as if he is ready to slam it down. The idle animation has Sora crouched in a ready position as he looks to his right and then his left before returning to his crouched position. 
Anyways, I think that is all I have for Hyper Hammer. Let's move on to Drill Punch. The Drill Punch transformation starts with the rocket and Space Ranger emblems spinning and glowing with a bright light. The rocket moves to Sora's hand and the Share Star again spins as the jets and rocket condense. Wings push out from the middle of the rocket arm as the top of the rocket stretches upwards and the claws of the drill form out of the thin air. An arrow-like effect as well as yellow and white orbs form around Sora as the spinning claws form and move close to the rocket arm. A bright light shines as the claws come together and fuse with the rocket. It is still spinning as Sora brings it down in front of him. Beams of light shoot out of the drill and then it shrinks down to its normal size. The logo for Drill Punch has the Sheriff's Star bouncing against the words Drill Punch. Occasionally a white glimmer will go across the words. Let's look at the combat for Drill Punch. Just like Hyper Hammer, the drill is boosted during each attack. The ground combo for Drill Punch starts with Sora spinning and increasing the size of his drill before dashing forward. Orange and yellow lights swirl around the drill as you dash forward and green orbs, sparks, and blue sparkles trail behind Sora. He actually spins with the drill during this attack. This is also the attack used if the enemy is far away from Sora. The next attack has Sora doing a front flip and slamming the drill into the ground, creating cracks. This creates a shockwave and a whirlwind is formed. The cracks in the ground are similar to the hammer's cracks, except that the drill seems to twist the cracks, making them look like they are spinning outwards. Sora then does another spinning dash, but angles down, scraping against the ground before swiping upwards. Sora then does another ground pound, but twists in the air instead of flipping this time. The shockwave seems to be bigger with the second ground pound. This is the attack Sora uses if he is above an enemy. For the combo finisher, Sora dives under the ground and emerges with a gigantic spinning drill. This creates another shockwave and whirlwind as well as swirling cracks in the ground. The ground pound attack also triggers if you are surrounded by enemies, and if you are still surrounded by enemies, by the time you get to the combo finisher, you will trigger a different attack. This one has Sora calling up multiple drills from the ground to attack enemies. The air combo starts with the same attack as the ground combo. Sora spins forward with a giant drill rush. The second attack is the same as the dashing uppercut attack on the ground. Sora then does another drill dash, followed by another uppercut. The combo finisher has Sora making the drill bigger and dashing forward. This is pretty much the dash attack at the beginning of the combo, just on a larger scale. The only other attack Sora has is if there is an enemy above Sora. Sora will shoot upwards with his drill pointed diagonally. The magic for Drill Punch is the same as the Magic Castle and the Magic Launcher form change, an orb that explodes on impact. The higher the tier of magic, the bigger the orb and the bigger the explosion is when it hits. The fourth tier has a different color orb usually when cast, and usually triggers the normal grand magic attack used in base form. The only difference though is that the magic doesn't trigger until the orb hits something. The drill also seems to spin faster during grand magic casts and magic finishers. I like how the orbs make up changes depending on the tier cast. It's a nice touch. Guarding while in Drill Punch has Sora spinning and holding the drill in front of him. If a hit connects, Sora will hold up his other hand against the drill. Double Flight and Air Dodge are not changed by Drill Punch. Dodging while on the ground will have Sora dig under the ground and come back up, attacking with his drill. The idle animation has Sora looking around himself before crouching and getting into a ready stance. The max shot lock for this Keyblade has Sora transforming into the Drill Punch form change and using what looks like corridors of light to dash at enemies. Golden Light swirls around the drill and a yellow streak follows behind Sora. At the end, Sora does a flipping uppercut. The finisher has Sora changing the drill into a claw that grabs a single enemy and bashes them around. Each bash generates a shockwave and cracks the ground similar to the Hyper Hammer attacks. Sora bashes the enemy against the ground five times. The final bash creates giant cracks in the ground and a giant shockwave. There is a red laser looking cord that connects the claw to Sora's drill arm. During the finisher, the logo above the command menu changes. The star spins and the drill changes to a claw and shoots out before coming back to the rocket. The claw opens and closes during the finisher. The rockets also are firing off during the finisher. And that is all I have for the breakdown. Now I want to talk about my thoughts on these form changes. I really enjoyed the Hyper Hammer form change. The sound design was really well done, making the attacks seem like they were really powerful. I didn't find myself using magic a ton though while in this form change, but the grand magic is amazing and really creative. I also just really enjoy the strike form Keyblade transformations. Being able to automatically use my finishers anywhere during a combo is great. 
A couple things I was a little disappointed with were the flow motion attack for Hyper Hammer and Drill Punch's magic. I really wish they would have done a unique attack for the flow motion instead of just using the ground pound. Drill Punch's magic was also a little disappointing since it shares the same type of magic as Magic Launcher. It's not a huge deal, but you get both of these keyblades so close together, so it's a little weird to see magic animations reused so quickly. I really did not use Drill Punch a whole lot either. I think it's good, I just didn't really enjoy using it. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down the Mirage Staff form change. This form change is associated with element form and is triggered by using the Ever After Keyblade. The transformation starts with Sora spinning the Keyblade behind himself before he brings it over his head and down in front of himself. The flower in the handle of the Keyblade grows larger as the sun comes off the top. The flower blooms as the sun and tower bounce and then shoot upwards. Beams of light spiral up the tower as leaves are pulled up into the air. The handle of the Keyblade grows larger to surround the blooming flower as it spins around Sora once. This triggers a kind of arrow effect around Sora, and leaves spin with the air. Everything condenses into a handle behind the flower, and Sora spins around once more. The flower attaches to the top of the handle, and the tower appears in the bottom of the handle. The flower opens up to reveal the sun, and the handle of the Keyblade blooms from the flower surrounding the sun. It all then shrinks down to our normal sized staff. The logo shows the words of the form change and show off the tower, sun, and flower with Rapunzel's hair flowing out of the window of the tower and going around the sun. The sun and flower rock back and forth. During the finisher we can see the hair flowing and ending up at the flower, as well as multiple suns flying out around the logo. Combo for Mirage Staff is the same regardless of if you are in the air or on the ground. The combo starts with Sora flipping with his staff, spinning beside him before he catches it and pushes it forward. This shoots a purple beam of light from the staff, and two beams of yellow light appear on either side of the purple beam. These yellow lights are spawned by what look to be mirrors. I'm not exactly sure what these are supposed to be though, so if you have any ideas let me know down below. They do kind of line up with this part of the keyblade, but again I'm not really sure. Anyways, these mirrors circle around the purple beam before they all disappear. Light spirals around the beams as well. Blue and yellow orbs spawn during all of the attacks in this combo, and the sun at the top of the staff glows during each attack as well. The next attack has Sora slamming the staff down, spawning four mirrors around Sora that slowly circle and spread apart, shooting out yellow beams of light with light spiraling around them. At the end of the attack, Sora spins the staff and catches it. This attack triggers if Sora is above an enemy and acts as a kind of ground pound attack. The next attack is similar to the surge attacks we have seen in Birth by Sleep. Sora dashes forward as four mirrors circle around him, going up and down. There is an orb of light in the center of each mirror that leaves a line of light trailing behind it. This attack triggers if an enemy is far away from Sora, or if the enemy is above him. Mirage Staff has two combo finishers. The first combo finisher has Sora thrusting his staff forwards, creating three mirrors that have beams of light shooting upwards, with light spiraling around them. These beams of light shoot forward. The purple beam of light stays in the center as the yellow beams crisscross around it. The next combo finisher has Sora holding his staff horizontally as he flips over it. As he comes down, he pulls the staff over his head and slams it down. A purple beam of light shoots out of the staff and three mirrors spawn beams of light shooting the opposite way. After a second, Sora starts to spin. When he stops spinning, the three mirrors converge into one single beam of light before both the beam in front of Sora and the one behind him disappear. During this combo, you can move around during the attack or choose not to move and you will just move towards the enemy. Mirage Staff has a unique ability called Avatar Barrage. This is connected with another unique ability called Avatar Shift, which spawns a Mirage of Sora every time he dodges. This can be a regular dodge, which is the same regardless of if you are in the air or on the ground, or if you try to guard. If you try to guard, Sora will dash backwards and spawn a Mirage of himself. Each Mirage will turn to face wherever Sora is facing, and have their staffs raised ready to attack. You can spawn up to 4 Mirages of Sora that will attack enemies Sora is locked onto. Though if you don't lock on, your mirages can sometimes target different enemies. If you try to spawn another mirage after you've already created four, the first one you created will disappear as you create another mirage. These mirages will not change form if Sora is in his monster, pirate, or tour form. His mirages will always be of his normal form. Now that we've talked about Avatar Shift, let's talk about Avatar Barrage. This ability lets you use the mirages you created to attack enemies. This lets you shoot a barrage of magic at enemies. Sora shoots 9 times, and on the 9th attack, he will shoot a larger cast of magic. A burst will shoot out of the staff as you shoot orbs of light at the enemy. This has a purple effect tailing them. During the normal hits, the sun will slowly spin. On the last hit, Sora spins the staff above him as he makes it grow larger, and light spirals around him. 
He then thrusts his staff forward and shoots a greater orb of light forwards. A ripple effect is seen coming from the staff as you do this attack. The entire top of the staff spins during this last hit as well. After this final hit, the mirages disappear, so as long as you don't finish the attack, you can keep the mirages and keep attacking. After a certain amount of time though, the mirages will disappear. The magic for Mirage Staff is not changed from Sora's base form magic, which I found a little odd. There may be something I'm missing here though. So let me know your thoughts down below. I know there are special abilities associated with element form though that increase damage or reduce MP cost, so magic is still a good thing to use in Mirage Staff. The movement for a Mirage Staff is pretty impressive. We've already talked about the mirages that Sora can spawn while dodging, but let's look at the actual animation for this dodge. Like I said before, there is no blocking mechanic for Mirage Staff. If you try to block, you will just dodge backwards. When you dodge, a white light will envelop Sora as his Mirage starts to spawn. Sora disappears as light spirals up around the Mirage. Sora phases back in a couple feet away from it. Sparkles and orb effects appear around both Sora and his Mirages during this animation. If Sora is not in battle, his dodging and blocking change. If you try to dodge, Sora will ride his staff while dashing forwards. If you try to block, you will phase out and back in a couple feet away, but no Mirage will spawn. This gives a clearer picture of the animation since when you dodge in battle, light and the Mirage spawning block the animation of Sora dodging. A green ball of light forms where Sora was that slowly turns yellow. A ripple effect appears as well as sparkles and orbs. When Sora jumps in this form change, he holds his staff horizontally above himself and flips upwards. It kinda looks like he uses the staff to vault himself higher. The double flight animations show Sora holding his staff vertically and spinning around it as he jumps upwards. Mirage Staff also has an ability called Hover that allows Sora to skate along the ground. This is incredibly similar to the Wisdom Form movement from Kingdom Hearts 2. While moving, Sora will occasionally twirl the staff in his hand. The idle animation for Mirage Staff has Sora doing a single spin in front of himself before pulling it behind his back and spinning it multiple times. The Shot Lock has Sora spinning around as he summons cubes around himself. He then pushes his staff forward as beams of light fly around bouncing off the cubes and damaging enemies. You can actually see the beams of light appear as orbs that split off into multiple beams. The light also changes from a purple color to a blue color as it gets close to the end of the shot lock. The finisher starts with Sora pushing his staff into the ground. This creates a tower that rises up out of the ground as light spirals up it. Sora spawns two mirages and they all shoot light from their palms into the bottom of an orb. The orb starts small with just Sora pushing energy into it, but as he spawns the mirages, the orb grows bigger before it shoots out beams of light. Light spirals at the bottom of the tower, and three orbs with lines trailing circle the ground around the tower, causing explosions behind them. At the end, the tower disappears into orbs of light. And that is all I have for the breakdown. Now I want to share my thoughts and opinions on this form change. I wasn't actually a huge fan of Mirage Staff. It deals incredible damage with the barrage attack, but it felt kind of broken. The normal combo also always felt kind of off to me. I never felt like I was in control while attacking. There were some attacks that went towards the enemy, but some that were kind of like a ranged attack. I also was a little disappointed with the magic not being different. It seemed weird for them to not have special magic with a magic-centered form change. The animations though were really cool for Mirage Staff. I thought riding your staff was a nice touch, even though they didn't even need to animate that. I just thought these flowed really well and were a lot of fun to see. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down both the Agile Claws and Twin Yo-Yo's form changes. These form changes are associated with Strike Form and are triggered by using the Happy Gear Keyblade. I'll be breaking down Agile Claws first. The Agile Claws transformation starts with Sora spinning as the Keyblade hangs in the air behind him, wobbles around and the hat bounces on top as the Keyblade grows bigger and the eye on the top turns on. The pipes snaking up the keyblade snap off and the top of the keyblade starts to spin. The blade of the keyblade becomes unhinged and blue energy arcs over to it from the top of the keyblade. The top spins as the camera zooms out showing that the door in the keyblade has been unlatched from the handle. The blade reconnects as the whole top of the keyblade shrinks down into the door. Sora brings the keyblade behind himself as the door spins and the sides of the canister spat out smoke. Sora then pushes the keyblade forward and a bright light flashes on the screen. Two claws appear out of that light and they spin around as these pyramid licking things appear on the outside of the claws. Blue energy connects them with the claws and we see the blade of the keyblade making up the end of the claws. We can also see the hat that was on top of the keyblade is in both of the claws. The pyramids sink into their place on the claws as they close around Sora's arms. If the camera does not go into a cinematic view, you can see the pyramids sink down to create this part on the claws. 
claws are in sections along Sora's arms and shift apart before they condense and connect, completing the transformation. When they condense, sparks fly out and steam comes out of the claws. One more thing to note is that these parts here on the helmet are these parts here on the Keyblade. The logo shows the words Agile Claws and the A in Agile similar to the logo on the helmet. A white glimmer goes across the words occasionally. The background of the logo shows the top of the Keyblade, but instead of a claw on the side of this making up the blade of the Keyblade, pipes are connected to it. The gears in the logo spin occasionally. The claws on the logo snap once, then twice quickly before they turn a bit, move in, and snap again. The gears actually spin at the same time that the claws start to move. The combo for Agile Claws is the same regardless of if you are on the ground or in the air. The combo starts with Sora holding both claws upwards and slashing downwards diagonally in an X pattern crossing his arms before raising them and uncrossing them with horizontal slashes. Each attack shows Sora making the claws grow larger. White sparkles are also the effects seen during this form changes combos. Sora then raises a claw before he starts to spin around holding his arms outstretched as he scratches at enemies with both claws. A blue burst of air is spawned during the spinning attack. The claws actually start to come apart during this attack. The next attack has Sora doing a backflip as he dashes forward dragging his claw against the ground. At the end of the dash, Sora drags the claw upwards as he brings his other claw right up behind it. Sora uses the second strike's momentum to do a flipping scratch attack. This is also the attack Sora uses if he is far away from an enemy. Sora's next attack has him bringing his left claw downwards in a diagonal slash before slashing horizontally with his right claw. He then slashes upward with his left claw before using his right claw to do a spinning diagonal strike. The combo finisher has Sora making the claws grow bigger piece by piece before he brings them back and then pushes them forward as they spin creating blue, green, and white air effects as well as sparks. There's another attack Sora will do if he is above or below an enemy. Sora will scratch upwards or downwards with diagonal strikes before flipping. The direction of the scratches, as well as the flip, change depending on if Sora is above the enemy or below them. This is one of the few form changes that actually has flow motion that has changed. The first one that has changed is when you dash while in Agile Claws. Sora dashes forward but holds his right arm out in front of him with his claw open, which is glowing yellow. Both claws have grown larger during this dash attack. If you attack while sliding or right after triggering flow motion by dashing into a wall, Sora will do a quick spin before thrusting both claws in front of himself and spinning forward. A wind effect is created behind Sora and different shades of blue spin out from around the claws. Magic while in this form change is changed to an AoE style of magic. If you've seen my Hyper Hammer and Drill Punch breakdown, this magic may look really familiar. <laughs> is the exact same magic that the Hyper Hammer uses, and as such, the breakdown for this magic will sound very similar. The higher the tier of magic, the larger the reach the AoE magic will have. Fire pushes out a shockwave of fire around Sora, and a number of fireballs will circle around Sora depending on the tier cast. The first tier will have two fireballs circle around Sora, the second tier will have four, the third will have six, and the fourth tier, Firaza, will have eight. Fire casts and above will burn the ground, but the normal fire will leave the floor unaffected. Also, energy arcs up from the ground during the Firaza cast. Water magic starts with the first tier spawning two streams of water around Sora. Every cast of magic makes water ripple out over the ground. The second tier has Sora making a dome of water that pushes outwards. There are still two streams of water though during this cast like the first tier. The third tier has Sora generating a bigger dome of water and spawning four streams of water around himself. The fourth tier has Sora creating a whirlpool around himself as four streams of water circle around him. Blizzard starts with Sora creating a barrier of ice around himself as two casts of ice circle around him. Ice also coats the ground during this attack. The second and third tiers of this attack are pretty much the same except that the higher the cast of Blizzard, the larger the barrier of ice is, the larger the casts of Blizzard are, and the larger the reach the ice coating the ground has. The grand magic of Blizzard is pretty much the same with everything being bigger and having a larger reach, but six casts of Blizzard circle around Sora instead of two. The first tier of Thunder has Sora creating a spark that circles around him, as well as a ball of energy that spawns at the center of his body and shoots out lightning. There is also a golden ring that spawns on the floor beneath Sora. The spark and golden circle have a larger area of effect the higher the tier cast. During the second tier, a dark orb surrounds Sora and shoots out bolts of energy. On the third tier, you still spawn the dark orb which you can see here, but energy also arcs down from around Sora. Lightning covers the ground during this cast as well. Thundaza calls down lightning that circles around Sora as a ring closes in around him. When the ring reaches Sora, a giant beam of lightning comes down and lightning spreads out across the floor as pieces of the ground fly out. Arrow casts have air surrounding Sora as two condensed casts of air circle around him. 
The second tier increases the range of the air and adds two more casts to circle around Sora. Small pieces of rock are pulled up into the air for the second tier upwards. The third tier again increases the range and adds two more casts to circle Sora. The fourth tier creates a whirlwind around Sora as multiple casts of arrow fly around him. Agile Claws has some movement tech that has changed. Sora's dodge roll has changed to a spinning diagonal slash that both dodges and damages at the same time. At the end of the slash, Sora lands on his shoulder and rolls back up. The air dodge is similar, but Sora does a horizontal slash around himself rather than a diagonal one. If you try to block in this form change, Sora will dash backwards and end the dash with a spinning slash. This happens when you try to guard in both the air and on the ground. When Sora is in Agile Claws, his claws will snap open and closed. His idle animation has him looking to his right and then his left before lifting his right claw above his head. He then pushes his claws outwards as steam comes out of the claws. And that is all I have for Agile Claws. Let's move on to Twin Yo-Yos. The Twin Yo-Yos transformation starts with Sora's claws spinning and creating a blue air effect around them. The claws burst off of Sora's arms with a bright flash of light. The yo-yos start to form with the Monsters Inc. logo appearing and fitting into the holes of the yo-yos. After the logos slot in, the blue pieces split open to reveal the yo-yo blades. Metallic pieces appear above the blades and fit into the gaps of the blue cogs. The camera changes and the yo-yos spin towards Sora as they begin to shrink down to their normal size. They then bounce off each other and Sora uses blue lines of energy to latch onto them, spinning them down and pulling them back up to catch them. The logo shows the words Twin Yo-Yos with the T having the same design as the Monsters Inc. logo. A white glimmer will go across the words occasionally. The Yo-Yos on the sides of the words spin and after the white glimmer will glow blue. You can also see the cog spin occasionally as well. During the finisher, the Yo-Yos spin out horizontally and flash before disappearing and restarting the animation. Just like Agile Claws, the combo does not change regardless of if you are on the ground or in the air. The combo starts with Sora throwing the yo-yo in his right hand forward, slashing vertically, and sweeping the yo-yo in his left hand out horizontally. The teeth of the yo-yos come out during this attack and following attacks. The second attack has Sora crossing his arms and spreading his arms out, slashing horizontally with both yo-yos. The next attack has Sora doing multiple slices upwards with his yo-yos. On the last slice upwards, Sora throws the yo-yo up underneath his leg. The next attack is a spinning attack where Sora spins the yo-yos around himself multiple times. The last two attacks are combo finishers. The first combo finisher has Sora turning backwards as he throws the yo-yos out behind himself. He then flips backwards twice while spinning the yo-yos in loops. The other combo finisher has Sora making the yo-yos grow much bigger and throwing them forwards. If you are on the ground, you will slash the ground to kick up rocks. If there is an enemy above or below Sora, he will do a spinning attack with both yo-yos spinning horizontally. He is angled slightly during these attacks. It is similar to this attack in the combo, but the yo-yos in this aerial attack are smaller. If an enemy is far away from Sora, he will throw his yo-yo forward to hook onto the enemy. If you hook onto them, Sora will pull himself towards the enemy quickly and kick upwards as he flips backwards. This attack shows that the yo-yo's teeth are usually gray. The yo-yos change colors depending on what attack you are doing. Also, a little glitch can happen with this animation where the yo-yo will move to latch onto the enemy, but the glowing effect on the teeth will stay behind. The magic for twin yo-yos is the same as the magic cast while in the double air gun's form change. Each tier will shoot out more casts per yo-yo. So the tier 1 magic will shoot out one cast of magic per yo-yo, the second tier will shoot out two, the third tier will shoot out three, and the fourth tier, Zom magic, will shoot out four. Movement tech is not really changed well in this form change, but if you try to dodge, Sora will dash backwards and do a quicker spin. While in twin yo-yos, Sora will play with the yo-yos if you are not attacking, throwing them down and pulling them back up. The idle animation has Sora throwing down his yo-yos twice before flipping the yo-yos in a full circle twice. The max shot like for this keyblade has Sora transforming into twin yo-yos and spinning them around himself. He then throws them into portals of light. Portals appear around the enemies you locked onto, shooting out multiple versions of Sora's yo-yos at them. The color of the spikes is purple here, instead of the blue spikes seen during the combo. The finisher has Sora crossing his arms like this attack in the combo, before spreading his arms out slashing horizontally with both yo-yos, except for the finisher, Sora has transformed the yo-yos. There are teeth on the insides of the yo-yos, and the teeth of the yo-yos are gray instead of the normal blue. There's also a hat on the top yo-yo with two eyes on it. You can catch an enemy between the yo-yos, which will damage them when they chomp together. The teeth glow blue during this attack and spin around, making air swirl around the yo-yos, damaging enemies around them. At the end of the attack, the blue teeth spread outwards before the yo-yos clamp together. They separate and clamp together a couple more times before the yo-yos separate and shrink back to their normal size. 
The eyes here are similar to the eyes on Boo's costume from the movie. And that is all I have for the breakdown. Now I want to talk about my thoughts on these form changes. If you guys have watched my streams at all or my podcast discussing Kingdom Hearts 3, you know that Twin Yo-Yos is one of my favorite form changes. Hedgehog Claws is also really fun to use as I really enjoy the quick attacks. The flow motion is really cool and I'm glad they added some flow motion attacks to these form changes. I love the sliding attacks for both form changes as well as they can get you in close to an enemy really fast. The magic for Agile Claws is not my favorite, but Twin Yo-Yos has really good magic so it makes up for it. I think what I like about the combat for Twin Yo-Yos is that Source styles on the enemy while attacking. The weapons are also pretty unique. All of the other transformations are actual weapons, but for this form change, they decided to use a toy. I think the contrast is interesting and is maybe why I like it so much. The finisher is also one I actually like to use since it covers a wide range and does pretty decent damage. It also doesn't feel like a long drawn out attack like some of the other finishers for form changes, so it's not like breaking my flow of combat. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down both the Blizzard Claws and Blizzard Blades form changes. These form changes are associated with Blitz form and are triggered by using the Crystal Snow Keyblade. I'll be breaking down Blizzard Claws first. Blizzard Claws is what I like to call a form echo. These are form changes that are pretty much exact copies of previous form changes. We see this a couple times in Kingdom Hearts 3 with Blizzard Claws, the Honey form changes, among others. I don't see the point in breaking some of the mechanics down a second time, as they are the exact same mechanics as the form changes they copy. I will, though, still break down everything that is unique to these form echoes. If I don't cover something with these, you can watch the original form change breakdown. You can reach this video by clicking the i-card in the top corner of the video. When a mechanic appears that I have broken down before, the i-card will pop out with some text. This seemed like the best option to me since I don't want to keep repeating myself in multiple videos. And I don't really want to waste you guys' time either. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's continue to the breakdown. The transformation into Blizzard Claws starts with Sora spinning and holding out his Keyblade. The snowflakes that are on the Keyblade fly off and start to spin around with Sora. Sora then holds the Keyblade above his head as it grows larger. Ice starts to form around the Keyblade, and the Keyblade starts to shift apart. It glows and starts to form into two distinct parts. These parts start to spin and form the different sections of the claws. The claws stop glowing and move closer to Sora's arms as they shrink down and the sections of the claws piece together. The claws sink into place at the end of the transformation. If the camera does not go into the cinematic view, you can see the snowflakes that were circling around Sora disappear into thin air at the end of the transformation. The logo shows the words Blizzard Claws with a single claw that occasionally glimmers. Snowflakes also appear around the logo during this form change. The combat for Blizzard Claws is the same as Agile Claws. Sora starts with a cross slash and horizontal slash followed by a spinning attack. He then does a dragging double swipe and multiple slashes with a finisher that has Sora making the claws grow bigger and pushing them forward as they spin. The situational attacks that trigger, such as being above or below an enemy, being surrounded by enemies, or attacking a faraway enemy, are also all the same animations. The only thing that changes with these attacks are the ice effects that surround them. Another thing that Blizzard Claws echoed was the flow motion. Both the dash and regular flow motion attack have been changed. Dashing can damage enemies and the attack is a drilling attack. The claws do kind of fuse together though with Blizzard Claws, and pieces of ice fly out. Magic is an AoE type of magic. The higher the cast of magic, the larger the reach of the magic will be. More casts of magic will circle them as well. Blizzard and Thunder are the odd ones out. Blizzard is the same magic, just with more reach. Thunder has a golden ring and a spark that have a larger reach, the higher the cast. The first tier of Thunder has a ball of energy spawning in the middle of Sora, the second tier has a dark orb that surrounds Sora and shoots out lightning, and the third tier still has a dark orb spawn but lightning arcs down from above Sora. The Zom magic is also changed. Firaza is just a larger cast of fire with energy arcing up from the ground. Waterza summons a whirlpool around Sora. Blazaza has a multiple cast of blizzards circling Sora. Thandaza has a ring of lightning around Sora before a giant bolt of energy comes down in the center. And Eraza is just a larger cast of arrow. Movement tech is echoed from Agile Claws while in this form. Sora's dodge roll now damages while dodging, and at the end of the slash, Sora lands on his shoulder and rolls back up. The air dodge also does damage when dodging. If you try to block, Sora will dash backwards and end the dash with a spinning slash. This can be triggered in the air and on the ground. The idle animation also echoes Agile Claws. The only difference is that steam does not come out of the Blizzard Claws form change. 
I know that was incredibly fast and may leave some wanting a more detailed explanation. I really don't want to waste people's time, which is why I shortened the breakdown for this form change. If you want to see a more detailed breakdown, click the card in the top corner. Let's move on to Blizzard Blades. The Blizzard Blades transformation starts with Source spinning into the air and holding up one of his claws. Skates spin out of thin air and circle around Sora. They close in around Sora and fit onto his shoes. After the skates are on, Sora skates on the air as his claws start to glow. The camera changes and Sora is seen spinning and raising his arms, pushing his claws together. He then pulls his arms down as his claws change to gauntlets. From the gauntlets, what looks to be wings of ice push out from the backs. These then shrink down at the end of the transformation. After the skates attach to Sora's shoes, a blizzard starts blowing around him. When Sora brings his arms down with the gauntlets, ice breaks out from around Sora and the blizzard stops. The logo shows the words Blizzard Blades with a skate to the side moving back and forth. Snowflakes also appear around the logo during this form change. During the finisher, the skate moves back and forth more quickly and snowflakes are pushed out behind it. Also, the snowflakes in the background spin. The combat for Blizzard Blades is pretty flashy and is extremely fast. I want to point one thing out right at the beginning. We can actually tell what Sora is using to attack with while in this form change by paying attention to the size of the skates and gauntlets. I thought that was a nice detail. Anyways, the ground and air combos are actually different this time. Let's look at the ground combo first. The first attack starts with Sora turning around and kicking up behind himself in a wide arc. At the end of the kick, Sora then uses his gauntlet to do a spinning strike. During the attacks in this combo, ice appears on the end of the strikes and leave behind a trail of ice. The next attack has Sora drawing back before dashing forward and kicking outwards with a horizontal slash. Sora then kicks outwards with his other skate and uses the momentum to spin twice with horizontal slices. It also angles upwards towards the end of the attack. This is also the attack Sora uses if an enemy is far away. The next attack is like a rising spiral attack of slashes. Sora starts with his skate and slashes around before picking up the slash with his gauntlet and continuing the rising attack. The next attack has Sora jumping into the air, positioning himself upside down before spinning forward with his arms outstretched with the gauntlet's wings slicing the area around him. Air and ice effects are seen around Sora during this attack. The combo finisher has Sora doing the same jump into the air that ends with him upside down before he kicks his gauntlet forward. This kicks up ice from the ground that freezes enemies. The air combo is much simpler. While in the air, Sora's base attacks will be quick strikes forward. These are all the same with Sora doing a flip backwards before he shoots forward. It actually seems like he forms ice behind himself that he uses to jump off of. As Sora dashes forward, he spins slightly. If you hit an enemy during this dash, Sora will jump backwards off the enemy. I thought he was kicking the enemy during this dash attack, but he is actually slashing with one of his gauntlets. The combo finisher for the air combo has Sora flipping upside down and kicking forward creating ice and air around himself. The gauntlets also seem to be doing damage as they have grown larger. After Sora's drill kick attack, Sora slices downwards with a diagonal slash. The ice formed in this slash is much bigger than the previous attacks. There are two situational attacks also that are unique. The first is when Sora is above an enemy. Sora will flip upside down before he slams his skate downwards as he spins, damaging enemies with his gauntlets. Ice is shot upwards from the skate and light circles up around Sora. If Sora is surrounded by enemies, he will flip upside down before spinning with his skates slicing outwards in a horizontal circular attack. Magic is not changed from the AoE style, so I will not be covering it again. Let's move on to movement tech. When dodging in Blizzard Blades, Sora will dash forward spinning and slashing at enemies with his gauntlets. Blocking is similar, except Sora will dash backwards then spin with his gauntlets slashing at enemies. Jumping is also changed well in this form change. Sora kind of tucks his legs in and flips backwards. He turns in such a way though, that while flipping, it looks like he's spinning horizontally in the air. Normal movement also changes to skating while in Blizzard Blades. When you stop skating, Sora will do a quick spin. The idle animations show Sora moving one hand behind himself while holding the other out in front of himself. He then raises it before putting it behind himself. The shot lock has Sora slashing at enemies with both his gauntlets and skates. This targets the enemies you locked onto, and you can see slashes appearing on enemies you had locked onto. The finisher has Sora slamming his skate down and creating a giant snowflake on the ground. Sora then flips backwards as he loses his skates and gauntlets. He jumps up as this giant ice sculpture forms. As Sora jumps off the air, you can see a snowflake shape made of light left behind. Ice also shoots out after he jumps away. After he gets to the top of the structure, he strikes downwards with his hand, which causes the ice to fall down and shatter outwards. 
We can also see light spinning around the ice sculpture, and during this attack, we can see enemies freeze if they are close enough. And that is all I have for the breakdown. I know it was a little strange since half of it was a copy, and I summarized a lot of stuff for it. Anyways, now I want to talk about my thoughts on these form changes. The first thing I wanted to point out is that this form change may be called Blizzard Blades and not Blizzard Skates because you use both the blades of the skates and the blades from your gauntlets to attack. I didn't want to include this in the breakdown part though because it's not really a fact and also it's not really a big deal. Just something I thought of. <laughs> I really like the flashiness of Blizzard Blades, but I feel like it's a little too fast. I think if they would have slowed down the speed a bit, it would have been more impressive, though I guess that kind of defeats the purpose for a Blitz form, form change. I also found it hard to use this form change a lot because I got this Keyblade near the end game, and I kind of already had my loadout for Keyblades. I think it's good, I just already had the Keyblades I liked by this point. I also was a little disappointed by Blizzard Claws. It seems strange that they would have the exact same form change so close together. I actually have an idea about why that may be, but I'll save that for a later video. One more point about Blizzard Blades that I wanted to make was that it was kind of confusing. Um, this was one of the form changes I didn't use a whole lot in my playthrough, but when I did use it, I was kind of confused about what was going on, and I was um, not really understanding why certain attacks were triggering and why they didn't. Um, so I think that's another reason why I don't really love this form change, is because things just go so fast and it's hard to know what's going on that uh, it kind of turned me off to it. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down both the High Wind and Storm Flag form changes. These are associated with Strike Form and are triggered by the Wheel of Fate Keyblade. Let's look at High Wind first. The transformation into High Wind starts with Sword jabbing his Keyblade forward with three quick strikes. These have air and water effects where the Keyblade jabs. On his third strike, he spins the Keyblade in his hand. At the end of this strike, the part where the sail starts to spin and the rest of the Keyblade grows bigger. Sora brings the Keyblade over his head and the wheel pops out of the Keyblade and starts to spin around Sora. Water also swirls around Sora as he flips upside down and twists above his spear. We never see the Keyblade transform into the spear though. It just changes from the Keyblade to the spear suddenly. This golden ray of light spins around Sora during this part of the transformation. As the wheel comes back around in front of Sora, he flips right side up pulling the spear up with him. The spear slots into the hole in the wheel and the wheel spins into place. A bright flash of light happens and the wheel actually becomes part of the spear with the middle of the wheel now sporting a compass. Spikes come out here on the spear, and wood pieces fit into the spikes. A fleur de lis makes up the point of the spear. The logo shows the word high wind, with it resting on a red flag. The spear is seen right behind that with a steering wheel and a flag flapping behind it. We can also see the rope that was seen on the keyblade here as well. Red orbs and wisps of black cloth, I believe, fly up occasionally. A wind effect flies through the words, and a glint of light appears as well. The flag and rope in the background move as well on this logo. The combo for High Wind starts with Sora pulling back the spear and then dashing forward, thrusting the spear in front of himself with one hand. At the end of the attack, Sora brings back the spear, spinning it in front of himself. The same water, light, and air effects can be seen during this stab. You can also see a slash effect after the stab. This is the attack Sora does if he is far away from an enemy. The next attack is Sora holding the spear behind himself before bringing it around and diagonally upwards. There is a green effect left behind the spear as Sora slashes. After the uppercut, Sora holds the spear above his head, spinning before slashing the spear horizontally, pushing out a gold ring of light as well as the greenish effects from the spear. This is the same attack Sora does if he is surrounded by enemies. Sora then jumps into the air and twists, doing two vertical slashes and slamming the spear downwards with both hands. A burst of yellow air is pushed out that dissipates into a blue color. An air effect seems to be triggered during this attack. We see this effect with another attack, and it seems like this will push surrounding enemies up into the air. The first combo finisher has Sora kind of copying the first attack of the combo with a giant thrust forwards. Although this time, multiple copies of the spear thrust forward around Sora. At the end of the spear barrage, Sora spins and thrusts upwards. This creates a burst of light and sparks fly up. During the thrust, rays of light or air appear flying back around the original spear. The other combo finisher has Sora disappearing and teleporting upwards. When he reappears, he raises his arm as multiple spear copies shoot downwards. Sora follows them with the original spear and at the end of the thrust, downwards, a burst of air shoots outwards. You can see another air effect during this attack with a cone of golden light or air around it. The same effect can be seen around the copy spears. Rays of light circle around during this attack, and if you are close enough to hit the ground, a giant X will appear on the ground. 
there are two situational attacks that are unique. If an enemy is above you, Sora so will do a circling slash upwards, ending with him holding the spear pointing towards the sky. If the enemy is below you, Sora so will spin the spear above himself before diving towards the ground. This also spawns a gold air effect that dissipates into a blue effect. The same air effect that has been seen in other attacks is also present here. You can see rays of light circle Sora during this attack too. After the attack, Sora flips backwards. This is the same attack that triggers when using the ground pound flow motion attack. Magic in this form change is changed to orbs. The higher the cast of magic, the larger the orb. The magic will not trigger until the orb either hits an object or an enemy. Also, during the cast of magic, the tip of the spear glows. High Wind has some movement tech that has changed. If you dodge while on the ground, Sora will dash forwards. This dodge has a really far reach. The air dodge and double flight animations are not changed. The block has Sora holding the spear out in front of himself with both hands on it. The idle animation for High Wind has Sora pointing the spear up diagonally before bringing it down in front of himself. He then spins it above his head before getting into a ready position. And that is all I really have for High Wind. Let's move on to Storm Flag. The transformation into Storm Flag starts with Sora flipping and holding the spear out in front of himself. The edge of the spear spins, including the floor de lis, the wheel, as well as the spikes. The spikes push off the wooden pieces and they spin in the air as the front edge of the spear continues to spin. The wood pieces actually just seem to disappear during this transformation, as I can't seem to find them after this point here. Anyways, the wheel disappears by this point and the spikes have become much longer. Sora guides the spear around himself as he spins. He catches onto the spear as a flag comes out of it. You can see the wheel appear here, and it seems to catch back onto the spear like it did during the transformation into High Wind. At the end of the transformation, Sora holds the flag above his head, showing the logo on the flag as a steering wheel. The only other thing I noticed during this transformation were the air and light effects circling Sora. The logo has the word Storm Flag, with the flag on the form change flapping behind it. An air effect moves through the words, as well as a glint of light appears under the word Storm. Red and white orbs as well as black cloth fragments fly around the words. During the finisher, the background gets more chaotic with the wheel spinning and the flag flapping around. Moving on, the combo starts with Sora jumping up and flipping before slashing down over his head with the flag. This is the attack that triggers if Sora is above an enemy as well. There is a red streak that follows behind all of the attacks in this form change. The next attack has Sora flipping the flag as he whips it from side to side. At the end of the attack, he continues to flip the flag but spins with it. He never actually touches the flag during this attack. Instead, he moves it around telekinetically. The next attack is a sweeping AoE attack where Sora swipes outwards with his flag and slowly moves the trajectory of the flag upwards. This is also the attack Sora does if he is below an enemy or is surrounded by enemies. Sora then swipes upwards in a slashing strike before doing two flipping slashes. The combo finisher has Sora spinning the flag above his head before thrusting it forward. This creates its horn of air in front of and around Sora. The flag also glows brightly during this attack. At the end of the attack, we can see the air move forward as Sora spins the flag and catches it. The only unique attack is if an enemy is far away from Sora, which is a strike rate-esque attack. Sora whips the flag forward, sending it spinning towards enemies. After it reaches a certain distance, Sora will call the flag back to himself and do a spinning slash forward. There is a golden burst of air that dissipates the blue. Magic while in this form change is an AoE style of magic. The higher the cast of magic, the larger the reach the magic will be. More casts of magic will circle them as well. The Zaw magic is also changed. Firaza is just a larger cast of fire with energy arcing up from the ground. Waterza summons a whirlpool around Sora. Blazaza has multiple casts of blizzard circling Sora. Thandaza has a ring of lightning surrounding Sora before a giant bolt of energy comes down in the center. Eraza is just a larger cast of arrow. Also, the tip of the flag glows during casts of magic. I know I didn't spend a whole lot of time covering the magic in both Storm Flag and High Wind, but if you want to see a full breakdown of all the magic, click the card in the corner of the video. I go into much more detail in that breakdown. Movement tech is the same as the High Wind form change. If you dodge on the ground, Sora will do a far reaching dash. The air dodge and double flight animations are not changed, and the block is the same block that the High Wind uses. The idle animation has Sora sweeping the flag one way before sweeping it back the other way twice and resting it on his shoulder. The shot lock for Storm Flag is actually really similar to the Blizzard Blade shot lock. Sora slashes at enemies with his flag, which damages enemies that are either close to Sora or targeted during the shot lock. I like the animation for the Storm Flag shot lock much better though, especially this part where Sora spins the flag above his head and then moves it to the side of himself before a giant horizontal slash. 
The finisher has Thor slashing at enemies around himself before raising the flag above his head, of course spinning it, before slamming it down to the ground. This creates a burst of light from the point hit on the ground and water explodes from the ground. Tentacles rise upwards out of the ground and if you pause it here, you can see a stream of water spiraling around Sora. This is usually seen when Sora is casting the water magic. Also during the finisher, Sora's entire weapon glows a bluish color. This makes me think that this is a cast of water that Sora is manipulating into the Kraken tentacles. Also during Sora's combo finisher, his flag glows as well. So maybe he is manipulating air in that one. Anyways, the tentacles slam down onto the ground, damaging anything close enough to it. At the end, the tentacles lose their shape and the water falls back down to the ground. And that is all I have for the breakdown. Now let me give my thoughts and opinions on these form changes. I really, really like Storm Flag. All the attacks are so smooth and the way Sora adds in all the spins with the flag is awesome. It's really interesting to see Sora use telekinesis so much while in this form change. I also like that we got another Strike Grade-esque attack from Storm Flag. The High Wind had some of the coolest combo finishers I have seen in this game. It shows that Sora can use what I assume to be light to make copies of his weapons. It was also cool to see Sora manipulate magic in a new way with the Storm Flag finisher. I think why I like these form changes so much is because they have strong, fast, and long-reaching attacks while also showing off really unique animations and attacks. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down Nano Arms. This form change is associated with Blitz form and is triggered by the Nano Gear Keyblade. The transformation starts with Sora pulling the Keyblade over his shoulder and twisting around before raising his Keyblade into the air. The tip of the Keyblade emits a burst of light and pieces of data appear around Sora. The data covers the Keyblade as he brings it back down. Sora brings the Keyblade back behind himself and lets it go. The blade of the Keyblade changes and the handle of the Keyblade grows bigger. Sora jumps into the air and lands on the glider that the Keyblade changed into. He then flies in a circle a couple of times before jumping off and grabbing the handle of the Keyblade. When he does, the handle grows smaller and the blade of the Keyblade changes into a blade with two smaller blades on the sides of it. The glider is extremely similar to the glider that Ventus can transform his Keyblade into. The logo shows the words Nano Arms, with the O being Baymax's face. The fist seen in the combo finisher is seen here with it punching forward every couple seconds. Bits of blocks and purple data fly back behind it as well. There's also Baymax's armor wing as well as the Megabot that Hero made. During the finisher, the Megabot glows purple and the wings spread apart as Nano Spikes push upwards. A purple effect can be seen spiking out and purple blocks of data can be seen as well. The combos are a little different for this form change as most of the attacks are copies of previous form changes. The attacks at the beginning of the combo are just normal attacks that Sora does while in his base form. The first unique attack is this dash attack with claws. I believe this is a copy of Blizzard Claws, since the Nano Arms copy has a more vertical looking claw, and there are points here that seem similar to the Blizzard Claws look. It's interesting that Nano Arms copies a flow motion attack. Data simulates the air effects around Sora, and he does not actually fuse the claws together like Blizzard Claws does. The next attack is the combo finisher for Hyper Hammer. He swings the hammer around before smashing it into the ground. We can see blocky cracks in the ground as well as data coming up from the ground. The combo finisher has Sora creating a giant fist above his hand as data blocks form in a circle around it. They change to a purplish color as they move upwards around the fist. Sora then brings the fist down in front of himself and shoots it forward. The air combo has the same combo finisher. Just like the ground combo, the first attacks of the air combo are simple strikes from Sora's base form. The first attack that is copied is from the clock drill air combo finisher. We can tell that the clock drill was copied because we can see a cog here in nano arms. Blocks and data circle around Sora simulating the air effect seen in clock drill. The next attack is one of the twin yo-yos combo finishers. Sora turns around and flips backwards as he spins the yo-yos around himself. Data can be seen instead of the sparkles from the original form change. Like I said before, the combo finisher is the fist seen in the ground combo. There are a couple of situational attacks though that are copied from other form changes. If you are above an enemy, Sora will copy the hyper hammer's ground pound. Blocky cracks appear in the ground similar to the effects from the hammer attack in the combo. If you are below an enemy, Sora will copy the storm flag rising attack. Nano Arms has blocks and data trailing behind it instead of a red streak. If enemies are far away, Sora will copy the twin yo-yo's form change, hooking his yo-yo into the enemy and pulling himself towards them before kicking upwards. Magic in this form change is the same as the magic Sora uses while in his base form. The dodge in Nano Arms copies the Blizzard Claws dodge. These dodges can damage enemies if Sora runs into them. The block actually copies the reflectability from Guardian form. 
If you look closely at the shell that Nano Arms creates, you can just make out the hexagon seen in the Reflect shell in Guardian form. Nano Arms has a grid, as well as nano blocks, that circle out around Sora. If an enemy hits your shield, you can counter, which again copies Guardian form. The grid and nano blocks expand around Sora, and blocks of data can be seen inside the area. The idle animation is the same as the idle animation when Sora is in his base form. He gets into a ready position and looks around for enemies. The shot lock for Nano Arms is a copy of Twin Yo Yo's shot lock. Data circles Sora's hands and can be seen floating around him as Sora creates two portals from data blocks. Instead of Yo Yo's coming out on the other end though, spikes shoot out from the portals. Also, the Nano Arms shot lock can target 24 enemies, while the Twin Yo Yo shot lock can only lock onto 18. The finisher has Sora creating a portal above himself and jumping into it. This disappears and then multiple portals appear that shoot out multiple nano spikes. At the end, the spikes have a purple data effect on the tips of the spikes. The portals disappear before a single portal appears, which Sora flips out of. This seems to be an original attack and not copying one. Though it seems strange that the same types of portals and spikes that were used in the Twin Yo Yo Shylock are used here. This is just speculation, but I wonder if this was an earlier version of the Twin Yo Yo's finisher. Sora could have jumped into his portal and shot out multiple Yo Yo's damaging enemies. We do know that Sora's yo-yos have a purple effect on them during the shot lock attack, so it could have a purple effect on it during this finisher as well. Anyways, that is all for the breakdown. Now let me give my thoughts and opinions on this form change. I really like the idea of this form change, but I didn't find myself using it a lot. It's good and feels like the best attacks all lumped into one keyblade, but I just didn't enjoy it. It feels a little unfinished or thrown together. The copy mechanic is really cool, but I think it would have been more fun if we could choose which ones we could copy. I have an idea of what I wanted Nano Arms to be, but I'll save that for another video. Going back to the logo, it seems weird that two out of the three items are not even in this form change. I may be wrong, or maybe I missed something, but why have the Megabot and Baymax's wing in the logo if they aren't used in the form change? It really makes me wonder if this was a completely different form change that got changed at the last second. Anyways, that is all I have. Hey you guys, today we're going to be breaking down the form echoes seen in Kingdom Hearts 3. Form Echo is a term I came up with that categorizes the form change copies seen in the game. These include the Frying Pan form change, which copies the Counter Shield, the Honey Blasters and Honey Launcher, which copies the Double Air Guns and Magic Launcher, the Boom Hammer and Clock Drill, which copy the Hyper Hammer and Drill Punch, and finally the Blizzard Claws form change, which copies the Agile Claws form change. Though, to be honest, I'm not really sure which one is copying which for this one. Since these are just copies of foreign changes that I've already broken down, I will only be pointing out the unique things. One interesting thing to point out is that the first three form echoes copy the first three keyblades you get from the worlds. As such, we'll go chronologically starting with the frying pan form echo. This form echo is triggered by the Grand Chef keyblade, which you can obtain by getting a 5 star rating for the Bistro. Like I said before, this form echo copies the counter shield form change, but instead of triggering guardian form like counter shield does, frying pan triggers blitz form. The transformation into Frying Pan starts with Sora spinning the Keyblade in front of himself while the Keyblade grows larger. The chef's hat on the top bounces up and then covers the utensils that were holding it up. Utensils circle around Sora as he whips the Keyblade around. The Frying Pan appears replacing the Keyblade while Sora spins around. The two wine bottles that were on the Keyblade appear on both sides of the pan and pour some of their wine into the pan. Flames appear on the bottom of the pan as pieces of food fly out of it. The flames get bigger and the utensils all flip upside down as Sora brings the pan up in front of himself. The mouse on the keyblade is shown in an outline and closes in around it. The flames spinning around the pan lock into place and as Sora brings back the pan, we can see a lid covers the pan and makes up the handle of the shield. The logo shows the words frying pan with Remy's whiskers, nose, and hat above it. The whiskers move every couple seconds. A spoon and a frying pan can be seen moving in the background. During the finisher, the blue oval turns red, and the frying pan and spoon move around more. The combo is the same as the counter shield combo, though there are fire effects with the frying pan form echo. The combo finisher is the same AoE style of attack, but the animation is different. A ring of fire can be seen forming above Sora as fire circles outwards from the shield. When they hit the ground, a ring of flames comes up around Sora. Magic is also copied and uses the same magic as Sora's base form magic. Movement tech is not changed in this form echo, so let's move on to the guarding and counter ability. Sora can hold his block in this form echo, similar to counter shield. If you successfully block an attack, Sora will be able to unleash a counter attack. The first counter is called flame torrent and shoots out a single flame from the shield. The second counter is called flame barrage and multiple pillars of fire shoot out to damage enemies. This is similar to the counter shield counters except fists are spawned for those counters. Every time a counter is stored, the flames grow bigger around the frying pan. 
The idle animation is not changed. The shot lock for firing pan has tons of fruit raining down as Sora raises his shield and cuts the fruit. This somehow damages enemies around himself. This copies the counter shield shot lock, so maybe they were just trying to think of something that could be similar. During the shot lock, we can see huge flames around the frying pan, and two casts of fire circle the shield. The finisher has Sora throwing his pan into the air and transforming it into a giant frying pan. He catches it and brings it behind himself before slamming it down in front. Flames cover the pan as Sora swings it down, and when it hits the ground, flames fly upwards and food appears inside the pan. And that's really all of the unique things for this form echo. Let's move on to the next one. The next four mechos are the Honey Blasters and Honey Launcher. These are associated with Guardian form and are triggered by the Honey Spout Keyblade. You can get this Keyblade by completing the Winnie the Pooh world found in Twilight Town. Let's look at Honey Blasters first. The transformation into Honey Blasters starts with Sora growing the Keyblade bigger and holding it in front of himself. Honey spouts out of the top of the Keywood before the pots making up the Keyblade separate and bounce around Sora spilling honey everywhere. The handles of Sora's blasters kind of just appear in his hands during this transformation. The camera zooms in to show Sora spinning his blasters above his head before bringing them down. A flash of light and honey appear as Sora's blasters change with the top of the keyblade making up the edges of the blasters. Contrary to the double air guns, these blasters are the exact same. These parts here spin around and shrink into the blasters with two staying on the sides of each blaster. A bee rests on the top of each blaster as well. The logo shows the words Honey Blasters with honey dripping behind it. Every couple seconds, the words will bounce and shoot out honey around it. Bees and a honey pot are seen in the background of the logo as well. The combo is the same as the double air guns combo, with the normal combo having different types of attacks in the combo finisher. The attacks are honey dippers with honey on the edge of it. Bees follow behind the arrows as well. The combo finisher seems to be the same honey dippers, but lines of honey trail behind. When an arrow hits, a glob of honey appears. All of the attacks for this form echo, as well as the honey launcher, have a chance to inflict a honey effect. This slows down enemies for a period of time. The magic copies the double air guns magic. The higher the tier, the higher the number of casts shot out of the blasters. So the first tier shoots out one cast per blaster, the second tier shoots out two, and so on. If Sword dodges while on this form echo, he will shoot out two arrows per gun and move in whatever direction you are dodging towards. If you block though, you will use the barrier associated with guardian form, which is different from double air guns. If a block connects, you can counter. This has Sora pushing out the barrier to damage enemies. The idle animation is not changed. This form echo has a shot lock if you lock onto one or two enemies. Honey circles around Sora as he shoots arrows down from above the enemy. This form echo also copies the auto shot mechanic seen in double arrow guns. Let's move on to the honey launcher. The transformation starts with Sora raising one of his blasters as these honey wing pieces seen here appear around Sora and circle around him. They grow larger before closing in around Sora's raised blaster. They then shrink around the top of the blaster as Sora pushes his other blaster forward. The other one's honey wings grow larger and start to twist around it. Sora pushes the blasters together and a flash of light appears revealing a spinning honey cog. At the end of the transformation we can see one of the blasters, the top of the keyblade, and a honey wing on the back of the launcher. Also during this transformation, Sora dashes forward when he pushes the blasters together. The logo is the same as before except the words Honey Launcher are seen now, and honey spouts out of the pot. During the finisher, flowers and balloons fly up out of the honey on the bottom of the logo. Just like the blasters, Honey Launcher copies practically everything that Magic Launcher does, but adds a honey effect that has a chance of slowing down enemies for a period of time. Like Magic Launcher, Honey Launcher's attacks change depending on your distance from the enemy. If you are close, you will do two swipes with your launcher with honey effects on the edge of the attacks before sliding forward, charging up a ball of honey and blasting enemies away. During the combo finisher, the launcher spins and grows larger. If you are far away, Sora will shoot two globs of honey before shooting a pot of honey towards the enemy. Magic and movement tech are the same as magic launcher, but because this is guardian form, you have a guard encounter ability. The idle animation is the same as well as the shot lock, though the shot lock looks slightly different. Sora shoots multiple pots of honey forward, with the honey wings acting like the propellers, and then breaks into honey missiles that home in on targeted enemies. The auto shot mechanic is copied as well. A honey pot is shot out instead of magic orbs. The finisher shows a giant bee of honey coming out of the launcher and flying towards enemies. Globs of honey fly out when it hits. And that is all the unique things I saw in this form echo. Let's move on to the next one. The next form echoes are the boom hammer and clock drill. These are associated with Guardian form and are triggered by the Classic Tone Keyblade. You can get this Keyblade by completing all the Classic Kingdom games. Let's look at Boom Hammer first. The transformation starts with Sora pushing his Keyblade forwards and stretching it out, before breaking it apart causing gears to appear around Sora. These bounce as Sora catches the horns in the hand on the Keyblade. He then swings his Keyblade into the gears, catching two and adding them to the hammer. 
The logo shows the words boom hammer with a clapper behind it and the hammer in the logo. The clapper claps every couple seconds, and the hammer's horn honks. Honestly, there's nothing really different with this one except for the effects. Instead of cracks, gears appear on the ground. These gears spin a bit when the hammer hits the ground. The air combo has two gears that appear at the end of the combo finisher. This form echo also has flow motion similar to Hyper Hammer. Magic and movement tech are the same except for the block and counter because of guardian form. The idle animation is also the same. Let's move on to clock drill. The transformation starts with Sora throwing the top of the hammer forwards, causing it to bounce on the ground. This then changes into a more drill-like weapon and spins around Sora before it comes back onto the handle. The logo shows the words Clock Drill with the same clapper behind it and the drill spinning occasionally. A cog is also on the logo with a Mickey emblem on it. During the finisher, a clock appears with the clock hands and gears stuck. Horns honk on the sides every couple seconds. Again, combos are relatively the same with minor changes such as the effects. The first ground pound in the combo triggers silver gears, and the second ground pound has gold gears appearing. The combo finisher is practically the same, though the hole that Sora creates when he dives under the ground shows the outline of classic Kingdom Sora. This also appears on Sora's dodging during battle. The air combo is not changed. Like Drill Punch, if you are surrounded by enemies, you will trigger another combo finisher on the ground. This one has drills shooting out of the ground with either gold or solo cogs on the bottom of the drills. Like the boom hammer and honey form echoes, the magic and movement tech are the same except for the guard and counter mechanic associated with guard form. Also, the ground dodge is changed a tiny bit, like I said before. The idle animation is the same as drill punch, and the shot lock does the same kind of attack, though the way Sora teleports is different. Sora creates portals that are similar to the portals seen in Timeless River in Kingdom Hearts 2. The area also changes to black and white during this shot lock, and you can see outlines of classic Kingdom Sora in the portals. The only other thing I noticed was that Sora changes to his Timeless River model during this attack. The finisher has Sora jumping upwards as a clock spawns on the ground, and the hands move to 10 o'clock. His drill slots into the middle of the clock and spins the clock hands back to 110. Enemies close enough have this clock effect that appears on them. After the attack, the black and white screen slowly changes back to normal. And I think that is it for the form echoes. I already did a breakdown of Blizzard Claws, so you can click the I card in the top corner, or click the end card to go to that video. I'm sorry if this felt a little pointless. I probably should have added these on to the actual breakdown to the original form changes, but I didn't really think of it at the time. But I hope this was interesting, and I hope uh, it wasn't too boring or too pointless. Hey you guys, uh, this is going to be a short video, but it has come to my attention that I did not properly break down a section in my Form Echoes video. I completely forgot to take an in-depth look at the fruit used in the shot lock for the frying pan form change. So today we're going to do just that. Let's freeze it here. Right here we can see some apples, oranges, maybe a lemon over here, some pears, and some melons I believe. As more fruit falls down, we get a glimpse of some strawberries, and I think that's all of the fruit. As Sora cuts the fruit up, we get a look at all the fruit getting cut up. The level of detail is actually pretty impressive. At the end of the shot lock, there is an explosion and pieces of fruit fly everywhere. Also, look at the size of some of this fruit. It is huge. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed. I hope this gave you a new appreciation for fruit. I'm very sorry for skipping over such an integral part of the frying pan form change. I hope you all can find it in your hearts to forgive me for this mistake. Hey you guys, today we are going to be breaking down ultimate form. This form change is triggered by having the ultimate weapon equipped. Ultimate form is signified by Sora's clothes turning into a black and white pattern. Black stripes can be seen along his pants, and crowns adorn the sleeves on his jacket. Sora's toy form is not too different from his base form with the black and white pattern, although he does not have the stripes or crowns um, in his toy form. Sora's monster form shows the same jacket as base form, but Sora's hair changes to a white color. Sora's pirate form is probably the most different. His cufflings have crowns on them, as does his hat, which sports three crowns now instead of just the one with his normal pirate form. His bandana changes from blue to white with a black swirling pattern. The backside of his coat also has a swirling pattern similar to his pants in his base form. Unique abilities associated with this form include teleport, which is an ability that lets you instantly close in on an enemy you are targeted on, as well as MP Hystera, which recharges your MP 20% faster. Other abilities include Combo Master, Leaf Bracer, Second Chance, and Withstand Combo, as well as the normal hidden potential ability associated with most form changes. Ultimate Form also has three combo finishers and a special guard encounter, which we will cover in a little bit. This form change also has the Hover ability, similar to Mirage Staff. Anyways, let's move on to the actual form change now. 
The transformation starts the sword spinning and summoning a magic circle below himself. If the camera does not go into a cinematic view, you can see that part of the circle disappears right before Sora summons his swords. Parts of this magic circle show off the swords that Sora summons actually. There are also symbols here which I believe some people are working on translating, as well as some designs here that resemble this part of the Keyblade. I'm not sure if they are supposed to resemble wings or some kind of celestial nod, but that's the feeling it gives me. Anyways, let's move on. As this spell circle spawns below Sora, he raises his Keyblade into the air as four beams of light spiral around him and meet at the hilt of the Keyblade. A heart appears out of the light and is actually the logo for the Kingdom Hearts games. The sides of the hilt grow larger surrounding the Keyblade and the rest of the Keyblade follows as these shards on the hilt push out farther. The blade of the Keyblade grows bigger as do the shards on either side of it. The entire Keyblade glows as a flash appears in the center. The Keyblade spins and collapses into itself as red points appear and rings of light push out from the center. The blade separates into three blades that look like the three in the Kingdom Hearts 3 logo. By this point, tons of swords are flying up around Sora, as his two outer blades spin around the center one. The heart in the Keyblade also spins during this. The three blades change to a range of different colors and come back together before Sora does a slash in front of himself. The magic circle disappears as Sora does another spin. The swords that appear during the transformation are randomized, and every time Sora attacks, they are different. So far, I have counted 8 different swords. I'll show them on screen here. If you find any more, be sure to let me know. If you look at the abilities of Ultimate Form, we can see that these swords are called Blades of Light. Master Ericus was also able to summon Blades of Light, I believe, in Birth by Sleep. One last thing to note about the transformation, a user by the name of Saxton pointed out that Sora actually keeps the handle of the Ultimate Weapon Keyblade during this form change. The logo for Ultimate Form shows the words Ultimate Form with the blade of the Keyblade being shown in the logo with four of the Blades of Light being shown behind that. Also these shards here are probably this part here on the Keyblade and the arc here is this part here. The logo pulses with a reddish glow and a glimmer of light passes through the logo as well. During the finisher, the Swords of Light glow blue and spin around the logo before standing upright around the logo. Practically the entire Keyblade is shown off during the finisher as well. The front mirrors the blade of the Keyblade, but you can also see the sides of the handle here as well as the bottom of the handle. The combat for Ultimate Form is insane. The combo starts the sword twisting up into the air and positioning the blade behind his head before slashing downwards before following that up with a horizontal slash. So it turns in the air out of that slash and dives forward, bathing a sword in white light as blades of light appear and meet in the center at the tip of Sword's blade. The blades of light also spin around Sword during this thrust attack. At the end of the thrust, we can see the white glow around the blade fade, and a red streak can be seen. Also a wind effect can be seen at the end of the attack. The blades disappear so it twists into the air again and positions himself sideways in the air holding his blade pointed towards the ground. Sora spins twice doing two vertical slashes in the air, which, if you are close enough, will leave slashes in the ground. After the second slash, Sora flips right side up and does another slash downwards, which shoots up multiple pillars of light in front of Sora. Two blades fly past Sora, creating an X on the ground if you are close enough to it. If you move the camera, you can see magic circles appear behind Sora, which is where the blades of light come from. This magic circle is different than the one used during the transformation. Sora's crown can be seen in this magic circle, as well as this blade of light, I believe. There's also this symbol on the outside of the circle that I believe I have seen somewhere before, but I haven't been able to find anything in my digging. There are also symbols on this magic circle, much like the circle seen during the transformation. Anyways, let's move on to the next attack. At the very start of the attack, Sora's left hand has a white orb surrounded as he flips backwards and brings his hands behind his head. A light effect also appears in front of his hand, which starts out blue, then changes to red, and finally to gold. There's also this textureless model that kind of looks like the Ultima Blade that Sora uses in this form change. I believe this is a bug, as this happens every time I have seen this attack. I think the textureless model is supposed to be a second Ultima Blade, but it is bugged out and they have not pushed out a patch to fix it. Anyway, Sora flips backwards and spins the blade in his hand before throwing both blades forward, spawning a red orb and a blue orb where the blades used to be. A blue blade of light, as well as a red blade of light, appear and spin around making a kind of double saw blade. There's an attack that looks just like this in Kingdom Hearts 2. This attack is used while in final form. The next three attacks are combo finishers. The first combo finisher has Sora flipping up into the air while spawning a magic circle above himself. This seems to be the magic circle from the transformation. 
Tons of blades are spawned as Thor spins around with the blades. The blades cut into the ground as they spin towards it. The next comma finisher has Thor twisting and slashing up into the air with his blade, which summons the magic circles with his emblems. The circles summon blades of light to come out of the ground, which spin before sinking blade first into the ground. Sora then thrusts forward, which causes the blades to push out horizontally, creating slashes in the ground as they move. It's hard to see it, but Sora's blade spins around his hand during this thrust. A green air effect and an orb of light in Sora's hand can also be seen during this finisher. Someone by the name of Azir Mistori pointed out that this attack is extremely similar to Roxas's light pillar thrust in Kingdom Hearts 2. The last combo finisher has Sora again twisting up into the air and diving towards the ground with a blue spike effect following him. Blades of light appear around Sora in a circle, and a magic circle appears around the blades. Sora slashes outwards in a circle as the blades of light twist outwards and light spirals upwards. This leaves a spinning crack effect, which is similar to the Joe Punch cracks. There are six blades of light that appear, and these seem to change color similar to how the Ultima Blade changes color. I'll talk about that a little bit later though. And that's about it for the combat, let's move to magic. Magic for the ultimate form is actually not changed compared to Sora's base form. I'm a little surprised to be honest that they didn't change the magic for ultimate form. Though other Keyblades with only one form change also do not have a change in magic compared to base form. I guess I just was really expecting there to be something different with ultimate form since it's, you know, ultimate form. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to Sora's movement. Sora's dodges are changed while in ultimate form. Sora disappears leaving behind two light effects. Another light effect appears and hits the ground summoning three magic circles that separate and circle Sora as he reappears. This mirrors the magic circle summoned during the transformation into ultimate form. It is just deconstructed and separated for the dodge, though it is possible that the magic circle during the transformation is also multiple circles stacked together. If you watch the light effects, it seems like Sora jumps during the dodge. The first light goes upwards, and the second light comes downwards, which is why I think Sora is jumping, or at least moving in an arc during this dodge. Sora also floats above the ground while in ultimate form, and sparkles are left behind while moving. On another note, orbs trail behind the sword while moving as well. If you are not moving, the sparkles and orbs will float upwards. Let's move on to the guarding and countering for this form change. Blocking brings up blades of light around Sora, alternating between upright and upside down blades. When blocking, the blades spin into place before disappearing if nothing hits them. If an enemy attacks though while Sora is blocking, you can do a counter that pushes out the blades damaging enemies that are close enough. This counter also separates the upright blades from the upside down ones. The upside down ones move around Sora faster than the upright blades during this counter. Let's move on to the idle animation. There's not really an idle animation for ultimate form, as Sora just floats if you do not move in a direction. There is a cool detail that is easiest to see though while Sora is idle, which is the fact that the sword's color is constantly changing. The colors move slowly up the sword. Let's talk about the shot lock. This shot lock is different than others in the fact that you only have to lock onto one target to trigger the attack. A red reticle appears with three shards on the outside of it. As you lock onto an enemy, the shards move towards the reticle. Once they fit into the reticle, the entire thing glows and stars and orbs appear around it. Also, there are other shards that appear while the main shards are fitting into the reticle. Anyways, once the reticle glows, you can trigger the shot lock. After the shot lock is triggered, Sword jumps into the air, flipping and twisting as a magic circle appears above him. This is the same magic circle that is summoned during the transformation. It seems like there is a circle above Sword, one surrounding him, and one below him as well. Chains appear around him, which may be our first look at Sword's chains. We have seen Terra as well as Ericus and Aqua use chains, and they all are slightly different, I believe. I may be wrong, but I am almost sure we have seen these chains somewhere before, but I can't for the life of me find them. If you have seen these before, please let me know. Another thing that appears are these magic circles with crystals inside of them. It actually looks incredibly similar to the crystals summoned while wrist charging in rage form. Those crystals are symbolic of the hearts inside Sora, so what do the crystals in the Ultima Shotlock symbolize? Maybe they are connected with the blades of light? Anyways, I'll hold up theorizing for another video. Let's continue with the breakdown. An orb of light appears in the center and shoots out rays of light as Sora spins around. The orb grows bigger and Sora flips backwards before the screen flashes white. If you look here, you can see a purple effect. Light moves upwards from the ground, and the ground has an effect that reminds me of light and darkness, kind of. The last thing I want to point out about this was something found by user Sarthek Verma, who noticed that Mickey summons a similar magic circle while attacking Xehanort at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. I do not know if this is the same magic as the Shotlock Sword uses is called Infinity Circle. 
Mickey uses Ultima, which could be the same, although a green sphere appears around Mickey, which makes me think these are two different magic attacks with the same magic circle. I've already shown you guys that the transformation into ultimate form, the dodge, as well as the shot lock use the same magic circle, so maybe Ultima is in the same vein of magic as this form change. Anyways, let's move on to the finisher. The finisher starts with Sora summoning seven orbs of light that all move in a circle towards the center. Seven crystals with seven magic circles appear around Sora. When the orbs meet in the center, a magic circle with Sora's emblem in the center and on the edges appears. This is the same magic circle seen during the combo. When the camera changes, we can see blades appearing above Sora coming through the magic circle as well as blades below Sora. As the blades below Sora move upwards, a magic circle appears. We can see Sora slashing around as these blades fly towards him. I believe this is what makes the blades start shooting outwards everywhere. During these slashes and flying blades, sets of two spinning rays of light appear with an orb of light in the middle and a magic circle appearing around it. Seven of these appear around Sora and when they all finish appearing, Sora raises his blade into the air, causing a flash of light to appear from the raised blade. The seven orbs summon giant blades and spin out around Sora, leaving behind trails of light. When they disappear, some kind of light or air spirals up around the blades at the bottom. You can't see it here, but if you trigger this finisher in other areas, you can see cuts in the ground made by the blades flying out. If the cinematic camera is not triggered, you can get a better look at the blades that are summoned. A magic circle is above the blades and a cross made of light can be seen. Wings adorn these blades and a cross makes up the bottom of the hilt. I'm not sure what the wings symbolize, but the hilt looks really similar to Xion's final form blades. Shout out to my mod Tony for putting this together. One last thing to note about this finisher, this scene here really reminds me of the crystal scene in the chess room here. It's strange that we never did get any information on what this was supposed to be, unless I missed something. And that is all I have for this breakdown. This is such a cool form change and there was so much information packed into it. I'm sure I've missed a ton, so if you notice something, let me know in the comments below. I definitely think there are ties to Scala at Kylum with this form, as the magic circles and blades just seem to really fit in with the theme of that world. Hey you guys, today we're gonna be taking a look back at Ultimate Form. There was so much here that I wanted to go back and try to piece together some of the mysteries left over after the initial breakdown. The first thing I wanted to point out was during the opening of the transformation. For a split second, you can see the other magic circle spawn during the attacks in ultimate form. I don't think I had seen this or even pointed this out in the original breakdown because I believe the scene I was using had a hard time rendering everything in. So by the time it actually did like render everything in, that crown or magic circle was already gone. Anyways, something that I've been trying to figure out was the symbol seen on this magic circle. Water Cage actually helped me crack it and it is very, very interesting. So first I will start by explaining how we cracked it. There are points on the summon circle where the symbols are mirrored. What I mean by this is this part here seems to be the stopping point between these two C's. They mirror each other with a Z and then this X which you can see is mirrored on the other side. I wrote out the mirrored parts which I'll put up on screen with substitutions of the characters. This is not mess with the meaning since we will be matching those symbols to a letter in the English language anyways. What I ended up with is what is on screen. When put through a substitution solver, it popped out this. If we break off the mirrored part, we are left with Adoratus. We were thinking it was Latin, so we split the words apart into Ant, Era, and Tis. When thrown into a translator, it detected Greek and gave us the phrase, look at her. This immediately made me think of the scene at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 where Sora is looking at Kairi as he disappears. I'm not sure why this would be on the Ultimate Form Magic Circle though. Also, if we take out all the spaces, we get Undead, which could be the incantation to summon these Blades of Light from deceased wielders. The last thing I tried was making the capital A a lowercase a at the beginning. This changed the meaning to beloved. I'm not sure which of these will be right or if they are even right at all. It just seems so weird to have words or phrases that fit so well in the Kingdom Hearts universe. Also, if you keep the spaces and change the capital A to a lowercase a, it changed the meaning to like at least. That one didn't really mean anything to me, um, but I did want to put it in just to, you know, fill it out and not like leave any missing pieces. One last thing I'll point out is that the other magic circle that I pointed out before actually has the exact same letters on it. I know in my original breakdown I'm pretty sure I said that this was a different set of characters, but they are the exact same. Anyways, I probably can't top this, but let's move on to some other things I noticed. The next thing I wanted to touch upon were the Blades of Light. I've not been able to match these weapons to anything yet, but I do want to say that the blade charge styles or form changes from Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance bear some resemblance to these two Blades of Light. It's not perfect, but it does look pretty similar. 
Also, this Blade of Light has a heart symbol that looks incredibly similar to the hearts of the Lost Masters Keyblades. It is a longer looking heart, which is different from the usual more full looking heart seen elsewhere. You could maybe argue that this looks a bit like the Blades of Light that Ventus uses in his Wingblade command style. And it could kind of fit since Ventus was in the Age of Fairy Tales, which is when the Foretellers had their Keyblades. Also in Birth by Sleep, Ericus summons Blades of Light, but I couldn't find a similarity to any of the other Blades of Light seen in Ultimate form. The closest I could see is this one with the rounded top, but even then it's not really even that similar. While we were talking about Blades, the Keyblade shows off frills, which could be similar to the Keyblade's frills. All of the Keyblades were said to be created after the true Keyblade, so this could be why they have a similar aesthetic. Also, the heart in the Blade of the Keyblade has teeth that poke out of the top of it, showing off the crown and heart combination we have seen in other places, such as the Throne Sora sitting on here. In my original video, I pointed out these chains during the shot lock and wondered where I'd seen them before. It turns out it is just the keychain of the Ultima weapon. Also speaking of shot locks, the symbol seen on Mickey's Ultima attack is the same shard seen in the shot lock reticle. This could be the keychains or this part here on the keyblade. It also looks pretty similar to the symbol seen in the magic circle of Sora's ultimate form transformation, but there's these two parts that stick out of it at the bottom. So I don't know if that's supposed to mean like a higher form of the magic circle or if there's an actual symbol that looks just like this. Anyways, let's move on. There are two things I wanted to go over with the combo of ultimate form. The first is the red and blue spinning attack. These actually always use the same two blades, the two-pronged sword and the sword with the rounded head. It's odd how these are not randomized like all the other attacks. Red and blue are almost always indicative of the connection between Sora and Riku, so I wonder if these two swords are supposed to represent them in some way. Riku is usually symbolized by the color blue, and in his blade charge, form change or command style, it looks really similar to the two-pronged sword. Moving on, the combo finisher is extremely similar to the Faith Command Ventus uses from Birth by Sleep. The last thing I want to talk about are the crystals of light seen around Sora during the finisher. I don't know why I was so vague about it in my original breakdown, but I believe this is supposed to be the seven lights from the Keyblade. That can mean the seven guardians of light, the seven princesses of heart, or the seven pure of heart. Yen Sid talks about how the light can move on from one person to the next when he is talking about how the seven lights move from the seven princesses of heart to the seven pure of heart. So I think rather than representing like the guardians of light or the seven princesses of heart or the seven pure of heart, I think it's overall just meaning the seven lights that make up the keyblade. I think this is proved further with the rest of the finisher attack. During the slashes that send out all these blades of light, some are stuck in the ground reminiscent to the Keyblade Graveyard. If this is supposed to be a nod to the Keyblade War, does that mean that the blades of light are representing the Keyblades of Light and Darkness? We can see blades appearing from above and below Sora, which could represent the opposing sides of Light and Darkness. I think this finisher is representing the Keyblade as well as how to bring about Kingdom Hearts. Light and Darkness need to clash to create the Keyblade, which in turn will summon Kingdom Hearts. Sora is seen to gain the Keyblade at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, and you could say that he is kind of the ruler over Kingdom Hearts, which is represented by the crown above the heart. And that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was interesting for you. I'm still so fascinated that the symbols on the magic circle actually had some kind of meaning. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down below. It could definitely be a huge coincidence, but that would have to be a pretty big coincidence for it to have words that could equate to things that happened in the Kingdom Hearts universe. Hey you guys, today's video will be breaking down light form, dark form, and double form. These are triggered by the newly added Oathkeeper and Oblivion Keyblades. Both light form and dark form are incredibly similar in terms of combat, so rather than make two or even three separate videos for each individual form change, I decided to just put all these form changes together into one big video. There's a ton of information here, so let's get right to the breakdown. First off, let's talk about how you can actually get these Keyblades. As theorized by a vast majority of the community, these are able to be unlocked by turning your proofs over to the Moogle. The Proof of Promises, acquired by finding all of the Lucky Emblems, unlocks the Oathkeeper Keyblade, and the Proof of Times Past, acquired by beating Critical Mode, unlocks the Oblivion Keyblade. I loaded up a save at the end of the game and didn't receive either of these Keyblades, so I assume that these Keyblades can only be acquired through the proofs and not from any kind of story progression. I could be wrong on that though, so if I am, please correct me down in the comments below. Each of these Keyblades has three abilities. For Oathkeeper, these are MP Converter, which changes all the drops to MP Orbs, Situation Boost, which builds up your Situation Meter faster, and a Form Change Extender, which increases the amount of time your Form Change Situation Commands will last. This does not increase the time you are in the forms, or rather how long you have to activate them. Oblivion has the same abilities, except the MP Converter ability is changed to HP Converter. So rather than MP Orbs, HP Orbs will drop. Okay, now let's jump to the individual Form Changes. Let's start with Light Form. Lightform is triggered by having the Oathkeeper Keyblade equipped. Lightform is signified by Sora's clothes changing to a gray and white color palette, with the kanji for light adorning his pants and hood. 
Sora's toy form follows the same gray and white color palette change, but his monster and pirate forms are pretty different. In his monster form, his fur changes to a darker color, and the stripes on his legs and face change to white. His jacket is the same as his base form, and his hair changes to a golden whitish color. His pirate form shows his undershirt and fur changing to white, as well as his cufflinks and bandana. The symbol on his hat changes to the Paupu fruit charm seen on the keychain for Oathkeeper. On the inside of his coat, you can see that the color has changed to white, and the kanji for light can be seen. The abilities for this form change have some of the new abilities added in the 1.07 update. Some of these are actually callbacks to abilities from previous games. Light form and dark form are the first form changes to allow combo modifiers in the form change. We have access to these new combo modifiers, as well as Falling Slash, Rising Spiral, and Groundbreaker, which were the modifiers from the base version of Kingdom Hearts 3. The base shot lock for Oathkeeper is called Sunray Blast. This uses the shooting star shot lock animation, and the projectile shot out seem to be shards of light. The transformation into this form uses the second form animation. Sora flips the Keyblade and catches it before glass shadows around him. His Keyblade disappears for a second and reappears during this, which we didn't see with second form. The logo for Light Form shows the words Light Form in a golden color with the Paupu charm above the words and wings spreading out on either side. Below the words is the heart symbol seen at the top of the Keyblade. The keychain cord can be seen behind that. Light shoots upwards around the logo and a rainbow shines above the charm. Let's look at the combat now. The combo opens with Quick Slash. This shows Sora spinning with his Keyblade outstretched before he slices upwards. A flash of energy shoots up in front of him from the slice. Sora follows this up with Flash Step. Sora jumps forward while holding the Keyblade out in front of himself. This can damage enemies, but also can block incoming attacks. At the end of the dash, Sora slashes upwards. This will trigger first in the combo if you are far away from an enemy. This is also an attack used in Kingdom Hearts 2. The last attack before the combo finishers is Radio Blaster. This launches blade projectiles at nearby enemies. Sora twists into the air and slams his Keyblade down, pushing out blades as an orb appears and pushes out with the attack. This will trigger first in the combo if you are surrounded by enemies. Now let's look at the combo finishers. The first ground combo finisher is Zantetsuken. Sora jumps back and crouches as he flips his Keyblade backwards. He charges forward as a ray of light appears with a flash and follows his slash. This was originally from Kingdom Hearts 1. The second combo finisher is Finishing Leap, a combo modifier from Kingdom Hearts 2. This shows Sora jumping into the air as the top of his Keyblade shines with light. He plunges his Keyblade into the ground as light pushes outwards and sparkles appear in the surrounding area. At the end of this attack, he twists in the air and we can see the light closing up in a pillar from the ground. His Keyblade glows purple after this for some reason. The last ground combo finisher is Black Hole. Sora does an overhead slash which has a greenish color to it. This spawns five beams of light that shoot outwards in different directions. This matches the number of points on the Paupu charm. Sora spins and does a horizontal slash as they all move outwards. You can actually see the kanji for light on top of the beams. Okay, now let's look at the aerial combo finishers. The first combo finisher is Triple Edge. Sora slashes upward, flipping with the attack before stopping and attacking the other direction. This is a strong slice downwards that spawns a pillar of light. This is the same kind of attack that Riku can pull off. The second combo finisher is Spinning Rush. This shows Sora doing two quick horizontal slashes before doing a flipping slash. He then spins the Keyblade in the air and catches it before dashing forward and slashing upwards. The end of the attack looks really similar to one of Riku's attacks. The last combo finisher is Spiral Charge. Sora throws the Keyblade out around himself before he dashes forward. He doesn't hold the Keyblade, but rather it spins in front of his hand as light appears in front of his outstretched hand. Light flies back around Sora during this attack. This looks a bit different than the attack we saw in the first Remind trailer, actually. In that one, we saw these green pieces around Sora. Alongside all these attacks, there are also some situational ones. If you are above an enemy, Sora will use Aerial Dive, a combo modifier from Kingdom Hearts 2. Sora spins around, slashing out at the enemy four times. If the enemy is above Sora, he will use Aerial Sweep. This shows an initial effect for the first spin, and another slashing effect for the final hit. As I mentioned before, Sora can also use the three combo modifiers from the base game in this form change. I won't go into detail explaining those since we've all probably seen them already. I'll note some other things real quick before we move on to Dark Form. The guard for this form change is a barrier. It has a golden tint to it, and when you successfully block an attack, you can use the reprise of Light Burst. This shows light shooting out and the kanji for light appearing around the area. Dodging on the ground will show Sora disappearing into a flash of light and reappearing after a few moments. This is pretty much the light counterpart to Riku's Dark Bowl ability. For both Dark and Light Form, the magic and idle animations are not changed. And I think that is it for Light Form. Let's look at Dark Form. As I said before, Dark Form and Light Form share a ton of similarities. Rather than just repeating myself during this portion of the breakdown, I will only point out the unique aspects of Dark Form. Dark Form, believe it or not, is triggered by equipping the Oblivion Keyblade. This changes Sora's clothes to a black color palette, and the kanji for darkness adorns his pants and jacket. 
Sora's toy form changes to almost completely black, as does his monster form. His pirate form also changes to black, and we can see the kanji for darkness on his coat. The symbol on his hat actually changes to the symbol at the top of the keyblade. Now let's look at the abilities for dark form. An ability unique to dark form is the dark siphon ability. This will recover MP when you take dark damage. The base shotlock for Oblivion is called Blade Fury Eclipse, and shows the animation for the Diamond Dash shotlock. You can see a dark shard in the middle of all these projectiles, actually. The logo for Dark Form shows the words of the form in a bluish color with a purple outline. The crown from the keychain can be seen above it, and the wings spread out around the logo. The keychain underlines the words, and behind this we can see either the hilt or top of the keyblade. A dark light pulses behind the crown, and blue light can be seen floating around the logo. During the transformation, you can see Sword's crown necklace fade into the black keychain, and the wings flap out to surround the logo. The combo finishers are slightly different, with dark effects showing instead of light. The last combo finisher of the ground combo is different. This is called Dark Break. Sora teleports into the air and dives towards the ground. Eight dark shards appear around Sora and darkness spreads outwards. You can also see four shards in the middle glowing. All of the shards disappear as dark flames and electricity shoot upwards. The name of this attack and how it looks is probably a nod to Riku's Dark Break attack. The aerial combo finishers all have dark effects instead of light, but are the same attacks. Dark shards and electricity can be seen around Sora during the last attack. All of the combo modifiers are the same as light forms, though Aerial Sweep has a dark effect to it rather than a light one. Who would have guessed it, but the dodge is also the same as light forms, though this one has a dark effect to it. Magic and the idle animation are the same, so the only thing left is the guard and reprisal. The guard is another barrier, though this one has chains around it and a purplish tint. The same tints for both light and dark forms barriers are seen in Riku's boss fights in the Realm of Darkness. Riku has a light tint to it when using a barrier with Mickey, and a dark tint to it when he's using it by himself. The chains seen here are probably a reference to the chains in the Oblivion Keyblade. The reprisal is called Dark Burst, and shows the chains breaking outwards to damage enemies. The chains on the barrier actually disappear during this attack, and new broken chains appear with the reprisal. And I think that is it for Dark Form. Now the form everyone has been waiting for, Double Form. This is the second level to both Light and Dark Form. With Light Form you will get the Double Form OKP Situation Command, and with Dark Form you will get the Double Form OBV Situation Command. OKP stands for Oathkeeper, and OBV stands for Oblivion. I don't believe there is an actual difference, and you can actually build both up at the same time. Activating both situation commands does not change or trigger anything, but you can have two double form form changes saved up, allowing you to essentially stay in the form for twice as long. Double form mixes Sora's clothes, changing one half of his body to light form, and the other half to dark form. Oathkeeper as well as the light form palette will always be on Sora's right side, and Oblivion and the dark form palette will always be on the left side. This is the opposite of how Roxas holds Oblivion and Oathkeeper. The kanji for light adorns his right pant leg, and the kanji for darkness adorns his left. The Kingdom Hearts symbol can be seen on his sleeves and hood. The back of his hood has half white and half black, which changes the color of the symbol on either side. It's cool to see a Kingdom Hearts symbol made from a light and darkness outline. So his toy form mixes the color palette rather than having half and half. His monster form shows a different jacket than his base form actually. His sleeves are white, as is his pockets. His gloves stay white as well. I think this is the first time we have seen Sora's monster form differ from his base form jacket. The rings on his legs alternate between black and white stripes, and his hair is black, with the tips being the golden white color of light form. Sora's pirate form shows his undershirt changing to white and black, though the white side is on the side of Oblivion, and the black side is on the side of Oathkeeper. The underside of his coat shows the same pattern as his base form, with both kanjis appearing on their keyblade side. His hat has the Kingdom Hearts symbol. Now let's look at the abilities for this form change. There are four normal abilities, which are Aerial Sweep, Combo Master, Dark Siphon, and Hidden Potential. We already know what these are, so I'm not going to talk about them in detail. All the other abilities are combo finishers or modifiers. The only other one we have is Guard Breaker. This prevents your attacks from being deflected. The shot lock for Double Form is Stellar Inception. So it spins into the air and lets go of his Keyblades. These spin in the air and light glows at the top of both Keyblades. Oathkeeper has a more goldish light, and Oblivion has a more purplish light. These move towards Sora as he raises his hands into the air. He wraps his arms around each other, and you can see a gold and purple light glowing on his hands, same as the Keyblades. Alternating purple and gold light converge around Sora's hands before a single sparkle appears. The two Keyblades lock beside him, facing downwards. These plunge downwards, transforming the ground into a galaxy. Light appears and flies towards the targeted enemies. The transformation into double form shows Sora flipping whichever Keyblade he has equipped, and calling both Keyblades to his hands. The glass shadow can be seen here as well. I think the reason they had the Keyblades disappear for Dark and Light Form's transformations was because Double Form also used the beginning of it. The devs could then switch the Keyblade to whichever hand it was supposed to go to, thus making the transition seamless. Anyways, let's move on. The logo shows the words Double Form with the keychains underlining the words. A wing from Oblivion and one from Oathkeeper on either side, as are the two symbols for these Keyblades. Now let's look at the combat for Double Form. 
The combo opens with a flurry of slashes, starting with a downward slash with the Oathkeeper before he does a horizontal slash with Oblivion. Sword then does one more slash with Oathkeeper before jumping into the air and slashing out with both Keyblades. Depending on which Keyblade Sword uses, the color of the slash effect will change. If you are close enough to the ground, all these attacks in the base combo will leave marks in the ground. The next attack is a quick dash forward where Sword crosses his arms and slashes outwards with both Keyblades. Each Keyblade leaves behind their color of light effect. If you are far away from the enemy, this will trigger first. Both of these attacks are reminiscent of Roxas' combo from his fight in Kingdom Hearts 2. A lot of the attacks in Devil Form actually are almost the exact same as Roxas' attacks. I'll be sure to point them out as we get to them. Moving on, the third attack of the combo shows Sora flipping upside down and spinning around, sending a flurry of light and darkness flying out at enemies. This attack will trigger first if you are surrounded by enemies. Sora's first combo finisher in Double Form is Double Blast. This shows him jumping into the air and slamming both Keyblades down. This sends up 8 pillars of darkness and light, 4 of each. Light spirals around the light pillars, obviously, and chains fly up from the pillars of darkness. At the top of these chains are the same symbol we saw earlier on Dark Form's Pirate Hat. This is the top part of the Oblivion Keyblade. It's really odd that we have seen this appear twice now. I've never been aware of this symbol before now, but if you have seen this elsewhere, be sure to let me know where down in the comments below. The next combo finisher is Flash Charge. This shows Sora doing a sweeping strike before thrusting forward with Oathkeeper. Sora spins Oblivion behind himself during this charge. This is practically the same animation that Sora does when he is casting Fire Magic in Master Form. The last combo finisher on the ground is Mirage Thrust, which shows Sora twisting in the air and spinning his Keyblades in front of his hands before he catches them and thrusts them down in front of himself. Orbs appear around the Keyblades as multiple rays of light and darkness pierce the area in front of Sora. This is incredibly similar to the attack you could do against Roxas when you stole his Keyblades. After getting off a combo finisher, Oathkeeper and Oblivion would appear around Roxas and fly at him multiple times. Your combat in the air is the same as your combat on the grounds, although your first combo finisher is switched out with an attack called Equilibrium Burst. Sword crosses his Keyblades before thrusting his chest out, surrounding himself with an orb of light as rays of light and darkness circle around him. This was another attack that Roxas would use against you in Kingdom Hearts 2. Now let's look at some situational attacks while in double form. If you are above an enemy, spinning strike will trigger. Sword spins towards the enemy, slashing out multiple times. It is similar to this attack that Roxas would use against you in Kingdom Hearts 2. If you are below an enemy, Sword will use a special version of Aerial Sweep. Sora will spin into the air with his Keyblades outstretched. When he reaches the height of his attack, rays of light and darkness circle out around him. Your circle modifiers are also available to you in double form. If you are on the ground, you will trigger Launching Thrust. Sora will do a quick spin on the ground before shooting upwards. If you are in the air, you will trigger Groundbreaker, though it is a bit different from the base version. Sora flips twice as he knocks the enemy towards the ground. Just like in your base form, you can hit Circle twice to trigger both modifiers one after the other. The guard for this form change shows Sora holding both Keyblades in front of himself in the backwards position. Both Keyblades glow during this and a ray of light and darkness circle around him. If a hit connects with your guard, you can use the Dual Smasher Reprisal. This shows Sora dashing forward and uncrossing his Keyblades to deal damage to those around him. This one may be a stretch, but I think this could be a nod to the AoE attack that Roxas can do. Dodging on the ground or in the air while in this form change will show Sora dashing forward. He moves so fast that he looks like a blur, and when he reappears, he spins slashing out around him. This can damage enemies that are close enough to you. While magic has not really changed, both Keyblades glow while casting magic, and the magic finishers will have Sora using both Keyblades to cast it. Your jump in this form change is reminiscent to your high jump used in Valor form. The idle animation for double form shows Sora flipping his Keyblades in front of himself. The way he holds his Keyblades in his general stance is pretty similar to Roxas's combat stance. And finally, the finisher for double form. Sora flips backwards as he summons his Keyblades crossed. He then twists in the air and holds them together, pointed towards the sky. A circle forms in the air with half of it being light and half of it being darkness. A magic circle is summoned and we can see a giant kanji symbol for light and another for darkness. We can also see Scala language on this magic circle. Light floods the screen and when it fades back in, Sora flips back spinning the keyblades in front of his hands. He catches them and crosses his arms before he thrusts his chest out and pillars of light and darkness appear all around. The area around Sora has changed to a skyline and we can see bat and angel wings around the magic circles. Above Sora is a purple magic circle, and below him is a yellow one, symbolizing Oblivion and Oathkeeper. After a while, the screen whites out again, and we can see the magic circle disappearing as Sora lands back on the ground. The logo during this changes to show a blue tint across it. The crown is above the words, and the charm is below it. While it is not really the same, Roxas's Miracle Hour attack also changes the background to a skyline in Kingdom Hearts 2, and he spins his Keyblades in front of his hands during this attack, though Sora only does it for part of his ultimate attack rather than the whole time like Roxas. And I think that is everything there is with light form, dark form, and double form. If I missed something, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. These forms really blew me away with their speed, strength, and style. Which form change was your favorite, light or dark form? 
Obviously, double form takes the cake, but personally, I think I'm leaning more on the side of dark form. Hey you guys, I want to do a breakdown plus video on the light, dark, and double form video I did last week. Um, a lot of people were pointing out some animations that I missed. Um, I'm not going to be monetizing this because I, I really just want to put together all the information that those people pointed out. I never would have seen these, um, and so I don't really want to take credit for that or kind of profit off of that. Um, it just doesn't feel right to me. Anyways, I'm going to go through all the things. Um, there were a ton of comments, but I found three or four different animations that were similar to some stuff from uh, the Valor form, Drive form, as well as some attacks in 358 over two days, actually. Um, so the first one is the Light form Black Hole Finisher. This is actually similar to the Limit Break for Roxas and Xion in 358 over two days. The first combo finisher for Double Form is similar to Valor Form's Brave Shot, actually. I really don't know how I missed that one. I guess I was so focused on the like pillars of light and darkness that I kind of just missed like that he does the exact same thing. Another attack that was a nod to Valor Form was the Rising Spiral attack, actually. This is the Brave Bee combo finisher. And the last thing is the finisher for Double Form is similar to Raxus's dual wielding limit break from 358 over two days. Anyways, I know this is a really short video. Um, I just wanted to get this information out to everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.